The following is a sports exclusive of the TCS Satellite Network. This is Ray Scott welcoming you to another week of Penn State football. This week's game is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated St. Louis, brewers of Michelob beer. Weekends were made for Michelob. And by your 120,000 Westinghouse employees who make products that help conserve energy by using it efficiently. And by Dailies. Dailies products are made with natural fruit juices and a bonus of vitamin C. Compare the quality and the price. You'll buy Dailies. The shimmering you see on this winter day is caused by heat, a very little heat. But Westinghouse has developed a way to take heat out of the air and bring it into the home. To heat homes, the Westinghouse heat pump can extract heat from winter air. It can reverse itself to air condition. Industrial heat is recovered by a larger heat pump. There is unused energy all around us, made usable now by Westinghouse, a powerful part of your life. You'll never make another mistake when you make your drinks with Daly's Mix. Daly's Cocktail Mix, outselling all other brands. What did he say? Daly's Cocktail Mix. When you make it with Daly's, you've got it made. Daly's Cocktail Mix makes three different drinks. I'll never what? You'll never make another mistake when you make your drinks with Daly's Mix. Daly's Cocktail Mix, outselling all other brands. Fist buds for all the people who make the sidelines a part of the show. Fist buds for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, fist buds for you. Penn State has Joel Coles, and he's the one with the kickoff. Kurt Warner was the other return man. Coles gets it out across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Now, for those of you who have followed Penn State throughout this season, be prepared for some shocks today. You will be seeing players today in unfamiliar positions. You will be seeing players that you have been watching on offense, playing defense, and vice versa. Starting at quarterback will be number 17, Dale Tate. No surprise there. At fullback, Matt Suey, number 32, and that comes as no shock. The tailback is Mike Gooman, number 24. Wide right is number 41, Tracy Hall. The center is Bob Jaggers. This is Mike Gooman, and he gets about five yards on first down out across the 30-yard line. Now let us tell you about the offensive line for Penn State. Number 77 there is Bill Dugan. Now he's in the spot normally occupied by Pete Kugler, who volunteered and has been moved to defense. Number 62, Sean Farrell. We've mentioned 58, Bob Jaggers. 78, Mike Munchak. 70, Irv Pankey. Second and five, Penn State. Tate looking. This is Mike Gooman and a Penn State first down out to the 44-yard line. So, George, uh, first look at Dale Tate throwing on the run right on target. Well, he had, he had, had a lot of zip on the ball. There's a sprint out right, good time to throw, second and five. Dale comes out, finds Gooman, puts a lot of zip on the ball. Something he hasn't done too much in the past. First down. First down, Penn State at the Penn State 44-yard line. Tracy Hall is wide left. The freshman McCluskey is wide to the right, and Gooman is in a slot right. Suey gets about two yards to the 46-yard line. 
Now, we have identified the various offensive performers, although I think we should say that at tight end today, in addition to Mike McCluskey, we will probably see Vito Cobb, number 85. We may see Brad Scoville, normally a tight end, number 80, at a wide out today. Is that right, George? Yes, he can play flanker, and they're going to move their flanker and tight end around. We'll see some unbalanced line, I'm sure. Second and eight, Penn State at the Penn State 46. Again, Gooman is in a slot right, and McCluskey is spread out to the right. This is Mike Gooman. Good moves and close to another Penn State first down out to the North Carolina State 47-yard line in the grasp of senior defensive back Mike Nall, number 16. Now the North Carolina State defenders. Up front, you will see 93 Dennis Owens. Well, first, let's tell you about the officials. You can see their names right there. We can tell you, you will not hear the referee Robert Wood today because, quite frankly, he refused to wear a microphone. So we'll have to relay what he has to say on penalties. Third and one Penn State at the North Carolina State 47. First down for Mike Gooman. He made a good cut that time. Now the North Carolina State defenders up front. Basically a three-man front is employed by North Carolina State under head coach Bo Ryan. 93 Dennis Owens, John Stanton 73, Brian O'Doherty 95 will identify the linebackers uh, at first opportunity. First down Penn State at the North Carolina State 43-yard line. Tate with a lot of time. Intended for Tracy Hall, but a good defensive job was done by Mike Nall, number 16, the senior from Akron, Ohio. By the way, Penn State's coming out with a wide open offense, which we're happy to see. Uh, uh, Dale couldn't find any receivers. He tried to get the ball to Hall. Tracy made a good jump for it. It was a little out of, uh, little out of bounds, but I think we're going to see an, an offensive show of fireworks today. And last week, Penn State got 27 first downs and only 10 points. They'll have to do much better than that today if they want to come out a winner. Second and 10 Penn State at the North Carolina State 43. This is Gooman, and a good job by Robert Abraham, a linebacker, number 53. Penn State goes to the draw play, second down passing situation. They give it to Gooman, lead draw. So he makes a block. Abraham, uh, Abraham filled the hole real fast, and now we got third and about five. I think it's about third and nine, George, at the 42-yard line of North Carolina State. Tracy Hall is to the left, and the freshman McCluskey is wide to the right, and Gooman is in a slot to the right. Third and nine, Penn State. Good protection. This is for Gooman, but it's overthrown. And it'll be fourth down, and time for the freshman punter, Ralph Giacomaro. Now, we should tell you this about North Carolina State. They have a high-powered offensive team, averaging 24 points a game. Defensively, they have given up 22 points a game, so we really expect a high-scoring game today. Woodrow Wilson is deep for North Carolina State. Oh, a super punt. Fair catch was signaled, and it's touched by Penn State first at the nine-yard line of North Carolina State. Inadvertently touched by one of the Penn State players, we should add. Weekends were made for Nickelodeon. If it's for real. Well, that calls for something special. Hey, hey Chico. Nickelodeon yeah. all around. Make your own weekend a little more special with a smooth and mellow taste of Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. What's the occasion? I've met the woman. <laughs> Again? Weekends <laughs> were made for Nickelodeon. A lot of people have been changed to different positions. It'll be inter interesting to see how they fare today. That was well played by Kuban and Matt Bradley. Gain of one, second down nine, North Carolina State. The man in motion is D. Whitley, a freshman wide receiver. 
Oh, my. Big, big run by number 33, Billy Ray Vickers, a senior from Forest City and a first down North Carolina State running out of that veer offense to the 39-yard line of NC State. Well, they put the slot in motion to the short side of the field. Penn State slides their linebackers. Griffith goes out, straight hand off to Vickers, makes a big gang. Urquhart comes over and puts him down. Jackson wide right. First down, the Wolfpack. This is Smith with a lot of time. And the interception by Penn State by Mickey Urquhart at the North Carolina, was it Mickey? I think it was Bradley, Ray. Oh, Matt Bradley, number 30, the sophomore from Johnstown, starting in place of Rick Donaldson. Rick Donaldson, and this is the big plays on defense that Penn State has not come up with lately. Now, Matt Bradley getting a chance to play. Rick Donaldson's hurt. Straight drop back action. Smith tries to pour it over the middle. Bradley's in perfect position. Leaps high. This is what you have to do. Go up and get that ball. Penn State has excellent field position. A first down for Penn State on the turnover at the NC State 46-yard line. Booker Moore powers his way to the 38-yard line for a gain of eight. I felt uh, before the game that the team that uh, can get something out of their kicking game and has the fewer turnovers will be the winners today. The linebackers for NC State are Joe Hanna, 59, Robert Abraham, 53, David Horning, 96, and Dan Lute, number 43. Penn State is second and two right now. No score, first quarter. Long count by Tate. Uh, uh, Matsui inside the 30, showing good speed to the outside before the free safety. Woodrow Wilson makes the tackle inside the North Carolina State 30-yard line. This is actually a brilliant run. Watch number 10. They pinch down to the inside. Matt sees it sealed off, turns on his speed, gets to the outside, gets that big first down. Nowhere to go, turns it on. Good speed for a big back. Wide left is Tracy Hall, number 41. This is Booker Moore running with good power and inside the 25-yard line for about a four-yard pickup before linebacker Dan Lute made the tackle. Well, Ray, North Carolina State's got a few changes in themselves. They're playing uh, Green, number 91, over the center. He's taking the gaps. He's a fellow gave him a lot of trouble last year plugging. He's got a lot of speed for a big man. Penn State's going to have to seal him off. That's why Sui's run was so effective. He went to the outside when he saw Green take that gap. Scott Hedinger came into the lineup with a play and is lining up wide to the right, number 22. It's second and six, Penn State, at the North Carolina State 24-yard line. Booker Moore. And he gets two to three yards down to about the 22-yard line where Penn State will be faced with a third and four. North Carolina State's cornerbacks are Donnie Legrand, number 42, Eric Williams, number 45. No, they have Louis Meadows, number 41, instead of Williams. Key play here, third and four. through the hands of Booker Moore at the 17-yard line. Might have been thrown an eyelash high, but oh, was he wide open. Not only that, Dale had to run off that. I think next time he might just put that ball away and take it. Uh, now, both teams are going to be jumping people around on defense. When uh, Green's in the game, uh, Wilson comes out, and then when uh, Wilson, uh, Green comes out, they put 41 Meadows in because they go to man coverage. We're going to have a field goal attempt of 39 yards by Herb Menhart out of a Mike Gooman hold. Mike's the holder in place of Tom Donovan, who was lost for the year. Menhart has been successful, 8 of 14. He has the distance. Oh, my, what a kick. And it is good. For centuries, man thought he had to incorporate all the colors in the sun spectrum to create light. Recently, Westinghouse scientists made a dramatic discovery. The human eye sees better with light made from only three prime colors. Introducing Ultraloom Prime Color Lamps from Westinghouse. Ultraloom makes colors appear richer, makes textures and fine details seem clearer than ever before. Looking at things in a different light keeps Westinghouse a powerful part of your life.
Penn State on fourth down and four elected to go for a field goal and Menhart was successful. Brian Franco's kick is out of bounds and Penn State will be penalized five yards. Uh, George, could you go in a little bit to this uh, rather unusual, it seems to me a little bit unusual, uh, kickoff return setup that North Carolina State uses. Now they have a uh, Chris Brown, the deep man in the middle, number 48, but I'm trying to figure out in my own mind what is different about their other return men, or is it just my imagination? Well, I just think, you know, that they, they don't want to let the kicker decide who he's going to kick there, and they're kind of shuffling those people around a little bit. But the, uh, in the end, it ends up the same result because they're dropping the front people off into a wedge formation, and they have three deep. All right, now the deep man there, you see the position. Here. Now, see, they're moving those other men up now. See, it just looked a little bit different to me. At any rate, the kickoff now will come from the Penn State 35-yard line by Brian Franco. Boy, there's a good kick. Fumble at the 12-yard line. And a good run back out across the 30 to the 33-yard line by number 46, Dwight Sullivan, who's a, a regular running back on their offensive team. So good run back for North Carolina State. We remind you, announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this game without the express written consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. Pete Kugler makes a tackle, the and fumble. there is a fumble. The Penn State players say it's Penn State's ball, and the officials agree. Pete Kugler, who had volunteered to move over to defense to help out because of the incapacity of Matt Millen and Bruce Clark, and so forth, and he's moved made, made the hit, and here, let's look at it again. Well, it's just a handoff, but the, the, a lot of penetration on the line of scrimmage. Kugler pinches to the inside. Now, here's a man came from offensive tackle, tried to take Bruce Clark's pos position, who was out for the rest of the year. That uh, forced a couple of more changes, which we'll get into later. All right, Larry Kubin recovers at the North Carolina State 35-yard line. Long count by Tate. This is Suey trying to get outside. And he gets about a yard to the 34-yard line before Mike Knoll, one of the North Carolina State seniors, made the tackle. Incidentally, Penn State has probably the fewest number of seniors on this traveling squad than in a long time. Uh, Ray, they traveled with seven seniors, and I believe probably only five will play today. Uh, let's face it, these are the fellows who are going to have to play for the next couple of years. You might as well throw them into the pits and see what, 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 the, what happens. Second down and nine. Tracy Hall, wide left. Tate in trouble and is dropped for a loss at the 42-yard line of eight yards. John Stanton, who is playing at the one of the defensive linemen, number 73 there, leaving the field, made the play. All right, let's take a look at Stanton, number 73. He does a little come around technique into the guard center gap. He gets in clear, nobody picks him up, and Tate has no place to go. For Penn State, it is third and 17 at the North Carolina State 42-yard line. 6.55 left to play first quarter, Penn State leading 3-0. The fake was to Gooman. This is intended for Tracy Hall, but it's overthrown at the goal line. Well, that time North Carolina State just rushed three, dropped fade off, there was no, no receivers were open. So first down, fourth down Penn State, Jock O'Mara in the punt. Woodrow Wilson, number two, is back. Uh, he's the deeper of the North Carolina State return people, but they actually have four people back fairly deep, North Carolina State. Fair catch, nine yard line of North Carolina State. So a great opportunity here for the Penn State defense to uh, pin North Carolina State deep. Here's a very important announcement, folks. We're going to have to apologize for not being able to provide our viewers with the usual variety of camera angles. North Carolina State's athletic department would not permit our crew to set up the necessary technical facilities that we're accustomed to. So it left us without an end zone camera, left us without a sideline camera. We apologize, hope you'll bear with us. This unfortunate situation entirely out of our control. Scott Smith, the quarterback. Penn State moving around their defenders. And oh, a super play. 
Tell us a little bit about this Veer offense. How does it work, George? What's the difference between the Veer offense and the wishbone, for example? Well, there's some of the principles are the same on the reads, but the Veer is more wide open because you can get two wide receivers out. The split backfield and the quarterback re reads the defensive tackles usually. If he comes in for the dive man, he'll take the ball out and run an option play off. It could be very explosive. Three wide receivers on second down seven at the North Carolina State 12-yard line. Number 33 is Billy Ray Vickers. He gets to the 14, and it's going to be a third and five as Steve Griffiths made a good defensive play. Ray, Penn State's doing something very interesting on defense. They're playing Hooban, Giuseppe Harris, uh, Kugler to the wide side of the field all the time, and Bradley, uh, trying to get their best people to the area where, uh, where there's the most room for North Carolina State to operate. They're going to have to come back to the short side. Third down, five. Good protection. To the 18-yard line. I think it might be shy of a first down thanks to a good play by Ron Walchak. All right, he gets plenty of protection. Can't find anybody open. Sees McLean over here in the corner. Delivery's made. Walchak stops the play. Ron Walchak starting in place of the injured Gene Gladys. Suey and Gooman are deep. Giuseppe Harris about 15 yards in front of the two return men. North Carolina State's punter is John Isley. Short punt. Fair catch. And Penn State is in North Carolina State territory. more again and this time he drives to what may be a first down around the 36 yard line now Penn State has had excellent field position through the entire first half and again they have to start putting up points when they get to take advantage of this excellent field position we're going to have a measurement here for the down says referee Robert Wood Penn State's offensive line Bill Dugan 77 Sean Farrell 62 Bob Jaggers, number 58. Mike Munchak, 78. Irv Pankey, number 70. It's another Penn State first down. First quarter so far has been totally dominated by Penn State. North Carolina State has turned the ball over twice. Once on a pass interception, once on a fumble. The interception by Matt Bradley, the fumble recovery by Larry Kubin caused by Pete Kugler. Mike Mead has checked in to the offensive backfield, number 38 at fullback in place of Suey. Mike Mead broke one tackle and gets to the 32 and a half yard line. Joe Hanna made the tackle. Senior linebacker from Lake City, South Carolina. Ray, did you see that? Uh, did anything happen to Suey? Uh, Not that I noticed. Second down, six for Penn State at the NC State 33. Booker Moore gets to the 30, and Penn State again is faced with a third and about four. And Bubba Green is checking in, big number 91. He'll play at that middle spot in the defense. Suey comes back in for Penn State. Now, you can watch Green. He'll take a, uh, a gap. He'll take one side of the center, and he'll try to plug that gap, forcing a double team. The linebackers will come out tough. It's a good uh, situation for a play-action pass. Third and four.
Tate does not get the first down. It's going to be fourth and about two, and Marion Gale, number 32, Dan Lute, number 43, make the tackle. It is fourth down and about two. That time, North Carolina State dropped its defense off, inviting Dale Tate to run with the ball. He turned up tough, but he just, just didn't get enough yardage for the first down. Vito Cobb, number 85, replaces Mike McCluskey at tight end. Penn State has a fourth and two at the North Carolina State 28 and a half yard line. A little yeah. over two minutes left to play first yeah. quarter. Penn State is leading by three to nothing. And apparently the referee decides that the well, Penn State players cannot hear the signals being well, called. Well, Ray, I tell you, that's bad for Penn State because they lined up in an unbalanced line with a slot formation from Scoville in the slot. I don't think North Carolina State has seen it. Now a substitute's coming in from the sideline and possibly the effect of that play will be neutralized. You have to hit them quick when you have something different. Repeating again the situation. Penn State leading 3-0. 2.19 to play first quarter. Fourth and two Penn State. Just inside the North Carolina State 29-yard line. North Carolina State has yet to get into Penn State territory. There it is. It's an unbalanced formation with Scoville in a slot. Long count. They do not make it. A fine play in addition to others by Woodrow Wilson, number two. North Carolina State turns up tough defensively, and the Wolfpack has the ball. Well, what they did, they made the adjustment in the secondary. They brought a strong safety up into the slot man's face. He pinched to the inside, forced with the penetration, forced from the ball carry to give ground, and then the cornerback came up and made the play. A new quarterback, Darnell Johnson, number 12, is a quarterback instead of Scott Smith, who has been their most productive offensive player all season long. Good play by Walchak. Oh, boy, he made a super play on Billy Ray Vickers. And Ray, he's going to get a lot of action today. I said before, Penn State's got all its best players. When I say best, that they're, they're more veteran players playing the wide side of the field all the time. And North Carolina State's trying to come back to the short side. They do it here. They come back to the short side of the field. They right, go for the counter option. Wisniewski forces the pitch, and Walchak comes up from his defensive end spot, does a great job. Loss, three yards, second and 13. Whitley in motion for North Carolina State. And Steve Griffiths makes a good hit on the ball carrier this time. Billy Ray Vickers, the senior from Forest City. Now Vickers, Dwight Sullivan, the other running back right now, number 46, and Scott Smith, who has not been in in this series, the quarterback, have been the three most productive players for North Carolina State. Well, well Scott has personally accounted for, uh, Smith has personally accounted for 15 touchdowns, 10 by running and five by passing. It is now third and 10 for North Carolina State. They use the man in motion, Eddie Jackson. This is a screen pass to Vickers. He is out of bounds at the 38 yard line. He is shy of a first down by a yard. That was a good call but Lance Mel kept it from going for a first down. It was well executed, and when you got a, young, a lot of young defensive linemen in there, as Penn State has now, they didn't smell it at all. That thing could have broke for a long. We may have a measurement here for the down. I don't think I was premature in saying it's short of a first down. Ray, it looks like it's a good uh, you know, foot or two short, but uh, they're going to measure. One minute, 24 seconds left to play in the first quarter, which has been dominated by Penn State, although only three points on the board. short by a foot or so and it's punt formation time that means that the John Isley will be in to punt his uh, punting average this season is uh, just a little over 36 yards Suey back Gooman back Pete Harris up close State playing without Bruce Clark, Matt Millen, Ron LaPointe, Gene Gladys, Rick Donaldson, Rick Donaldson, 
But so far, the defense has performed admirably. High pass. Matsui, fair catch. Penn State, 28-yard line. Now, this is Penn State's worst field position here in the first quarter. They still have to come up with some bigger plays, uh, I think, overhead, uh, Ray, through the air, because when you keep the ball on the ground, they're running it well, and it's ball control, but you eat up the clock. If you're not putting points on the ball, uh, board, it can backfire, as it did last week with, uh, against Miami. Hedinger is wide out to the left. McCluskey is a tight end on the right side. There goes Suey, and this time Suey gets only about a yard to the 30. Well, they're pinching those uh, three down linemen to the inside. Uh, the tackles to the take the inside gap, and the, the middle guard stand that time went to the side of the, uh, the strength of the formation. Donnie Legrand, number 42, one of the leading tacklers for North Carolina State, is at the one corner. Eric Williams is at the other corner. Second and nine, Penn State. the 33 yard line Kurt Warner just checked into the backfield the freshman making his first appearance now in what about a month since the Rutgers game and where he had a sensational debut let's hope he can do something today uh, North Carolina is playing what we call a lot of two free safeties protecting to the outsides and leaving the middle wide open because Penn State has not thrown the ball too much over the middle I think again it's open if they decide to go over the middle third and six Intended for Warner, but not thrown that well, and it's going to be fourth down. And so far today, Tate is having his problems, except for maybe the first pass that he threw today. Well, Warner was definitely open. The ball was overthrown. That was a key play because it would have been a big first down and then some. Now this time, North Carolina State has only one man deep. Maybe they're going to try and block this punt by Giacomaro. Woodrow Wilson back at the North Carolina State 30. Here they come. Wilson back at the 24-yard line. Gets it to the North Carolina State 34-yard line and relatively good position for the North Carolina State offense on the final play of the first quarter. We've reached the end of the first quarter. The score, Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. 50 years ago, America had one rocket expert. He developed the first liquid propellant rocket and most of the components basic to rocket engines. For America, the space age began with Robert Goddard and is being advanced today by scientists like him. Space is one of the sciences of Rockwell International. Over two-thirds of all U.S. manned space flights and satellites have been launched with rocket engines built by Rockwell. Rockwell also builds satellites for a system that will let navigators worldwide determine their exact positions to within 30 feet. And Rockwell is prime contractor for NASA's reusable space shuttle orbiter. But Rockwell is more than an aerospace company, much more. Rockwell International is a major multi-industry company, applying advanced technology to a wide range of products in automotive, electronics, general industries, and aerospace. Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. Dad's Gold Label canned dog foods have all the high-quality boneless meat and meat byproducts that your dog wants, plus the vitamins and minerals he needs for a completely balanced nutrition. And we've added an extra touch of flavoring to the gravy for even more appetite appeal. For variety, there's Dad's beef chunks, liver chunks, and beef stew. Try Dad's Gold Label canned dog foods. But don't be surprised if your dog starts singing for his supper. Super play drops Smith as Pete Kugler 
Makes another fine play, number 57. Well, he, he looked... Just an inspirational play by Pete Kugler. Pitches to the inside. Now, they wanted to go to quick, number 22, in a short side of field off a counter option play, and Pete just come down, pitched down the inside, puts the quarterback down. He's playing an inspired game. He might be the leader that they need now with Millen and Clark out. Jim Dooley, number 83, is playing a defensive end now on the right side for Penn State. Third and 11 for North Carolina State. The ball was tipped, but still caught. Close to a first down. Grover Edwards defending. Well, he's a good... This is a similar play they tried to hit quick before. Counter option, comes out, he's looking for the tight end, Dawson, short side of field. Now, there should have been a little tighter coverage over there. Griffiths was in on the play. Grover Edwards was in on the play. Punt by Isley. Fair catch, Gooman, Penn State 21-yard line. Penn State's being backed up now the last couple of times by Isley's punting, and uh, he gets it high enough and good enough hang time that there uh, has been no return yardage. Incidentally, Weatherspoon, Ray Weatherspoon, number 11, was in defensively on that last play, uh, defensive play prior to the punt. We're seeing a lot of numbers and a lot of new faces, Ray, but uh, so far, both defenses uh, seem to have, uh, have been holding up quite well, and I'm sure they work real hard on defense. We, we predicted an offensive game, but so far, both defenses have played well. Suey at fullback, number 25, Kurt Warner at tailback. This is Warner. 30, 35, 39 yard line. Oh, he's running well after that long absence because of a hamstring pull. And he, and he shows you some of the moves. Uh, he almost loses this pitch. You can see his face, it's a little high, almost fumbles it. Now he keys his block and Woda, which is out front, gets a good block by number 80. Scoville, now watch this cut. Breaks it off to the inside, slips a tackle, looking to go into the inside again. He could be the difference. Good gain to the Penn State 38-yard line, and of course, a first down. There goes Suey to the 41 and a half. A gain of about three. Bubba Green, number 91, listed as uh, playing the outside on this three-man front, but they have not been using him outside. No, they put him, putting him over the center, hoping he can get penetration. He's very quick and he's very strong, and uh, they must feel they can give Penn State centers a lot of trouble. They're moving a lot of their defensive people around, too. Second down, seven Penn State at the Penn State 41 and a half. Three nothing, Penn State leading. Early second quarter. Warner breaks a tackle. Oh, my, what a run. Now he turned what could have been a no-gainer or a one-yard gain into a first down near midfield. And, Ray, if he was a step slower, uh, Green would have had him. Green... This is what we're talking about, Green. Now watch him go to the left part of your screen, pushes off the center's block, pinches to the inside, gets a piece of Warner. Warner's stronger than you think. And if he wasn't any as quick as he was, he would have been thrown for a loss. First down, Penn State at midfield. Tate looking, looking, looking. That's what he has hey, to Hey, good effort. And Tate turns a short gainer into a might be a first down at the North Carolina State 41-yard line, or if not a first down, within a foot or so. Now, Ray, Dale's got to do more of this. They sprint out to the right. Two receivers are going out. They're slipping the tail back out in the flat, and they got a flank right there. And while the defense drops off, Tate has the option to run. He has to turn upfield and try to make some yardage on that play. It is second and about a foot to go at the North Carolina State 41. New left guard, Dave Opfar, number 68 for Penn State. Warner finds a little crease and a first down. Did he fumble? But if so, I think it might have been. Let's see what the officials say. Was it before or after the whistle? Af it was before the whistle. It is a fumble. Penn State has now turned it over to North Carolina State. Well, that happens when you get these great backs and make all kinds of moves. He found a little crease, turned another loss into a gainer. But in the meantime, he slipped to let the ball slip out of his hands. He's got to learn to cover the ball when he goes in there and all that, that tough crowd. First down, North Carolina State at the North Carolina State 37-yard line. The quarterback, number 11, Scott Smith. 
This is Billy Ray Vickers. And he gets four or five yards out across the 40. Did they go on a quick count that time? They did not go on a quick count. Probably the first sound. They almost caught Penn State a little asleep. Number 27. We have him listed as a defensive back. Lee. He's in the lineup as a wide receiver for North Carolina State. This is a second and six play. And a first down for Vickers out at the North Carolina State 49-yard line before Larry Kubin makes the tackle. Uh, this is their All-American center, Richard. Watch him seal off the linebacker, enabling the ball carrier to make that inside cut. They say he's as fine offensive center as there is in the country. Number 42, Stuart McMunn, is in defensively for Penn State. In the defensive backfield. On first down. Oh, there was a very short gain and a lot of punishment. Excellent gang tackling. Ex excellent pursuit after the ball was thrown. Ed Pritz, number 69, who is in at linebacker. Ron Walchak, number 40, gained two yards. Second down eight, North Carolina State. Penn State 48-yard line. Ten minutes left to play in the first half. Penn State leading 3-0. Whitley in motion. Oh, a super play by number 72, Steve Stupar, who is in a tackle right now, the senior from West Mifflin. A lot of new people. Steve has played a little bit. And Joe Paterno substituting, anticipating that this warm weather might have some effect on his squad late in the game. That gain, two yards. Third down, eight. Wide left, Mike Quick, the leading receiver for North Carolina State. Number 22. This is a third and eight play. Pass incomplete. Fourth down, punt formation time again for North Carolina State. Isley is getting quite a workout today, the punter. Well, uh, you know, both defenses are, are just playing great. They, uh, they got the offensive teams a little bit confused. They're changing their defensive alignments. They're changing actual players, lying up on different offensive positions. And uh, it's, it's been very effective for both teams so far. Isley gets off a fine punt. And into the end zone, and Penn State will have it on a touchback at the Penn State 20-yard line. I'm Ray Scott, speaking to you for the TCS Satellite Network. I'm honored to be able to share with you the action-packed sports programming offered through the TCS Satellite Network. I'm delighted that you're with us today, and I hope you're enjoying today's event. After all, that's what really is important. And we're interested in what your thoughts are. Drop us a line. Write TCS Satellite Network, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. We'll be waiting to hear from you. They're sending the plays in with the tailbacks. They have, you know, three, actually four, and they don't have that many wide receivers who used to uh, carry the plays. Penn State, second and seven. Matsui, who did he draw a crowd in a hurry and a loss of a yard to the 22-yard line. on third and long here comes the ever-present Bubba Green number 91 a junior from Woodbine New Jersey they bring Green and they bring Meadows in at the same time now that was a counter trap to the fullback and a, a guard he just uh, closed off that trap and stuffed foul number 62 the pulling guard now Penn State goes with two wide receivers this time Terry Rakowski number 16 Scott Hedinger number 22 this is third and nine. And it's not going to be a first down, and Penn State's going to have to kick it away again. Well, you see, in a position like that, now they're saying, okay, it's third and nine. We'll let you run with the ball a little bit. That's only effective 
really when it's short yardage. You know, he's going to have to start picking out some receivers or try to get to that tight end on a throwback over the middle. Giacomaro to punt. Woodrow Wilson deep to receive that punt. Oh, he gets it up high. Wilson at his own 37. Gets away from one. And a good run back to about the 47-yard line of North Carolina State. Midway in the second quarter. This is the 16th meeting between Penn State and North Carolina State. Penn State has won 13. North Carolina State has won two. The series started back in 1920. And last year's score was 19 to 10 in favor of Penn State. And that resulted in Penn State's first ever number one ranking in the weekly polls. But this is this year. First down, North Carolina State at the Wolfpack 47-yard line. Penn State leading 3-0 midway second quarter. And that Veer offense finds a handoff from Smith. Now, Ray, Penn State better be alert. North Carolina State has figured out they're playing in a lot of their good plays to the wide side of the field. That time, they put the strength of their formation into the sidelines, a slot formation, forcing Penn State's uh, best players or the more veteran players to the short side of the field. Watch for them to come back out wide. Second down, eight. That's Vickers getting just a couple, and North Carolina State will have a third and a bit more than four for a first down. Tom Wise, number 49, has checked into the defensive backfield for Penn State. A lot of players getting an opportunity to play today. Neither team has been able to make the, the third down conversions or hit on any big plays thus far in the game. Three wide receivers on third and four. Almost picked off. Lance Mel did a super job in keeping that ball away from Mike Quick, the intended receiver and leading receiver for North Carolina State, and it's fourth down. Uh, they hit him in a little delay uh, pattern, and they just wanted to get the first down. And Lance Mel is a, has been compared by Joe, Tepr as Joe Paterno as good, if not the best linebacker Penn State has ever had. Gooman back deep. Suey back deep. Icely punting. Good punt. And it's into the end zone, and this now has resulted in pretty much of a, of a punting duel between Giacomaro of Penn State and Isley of North Carolina State. The score, Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. Ray Scott here for the Penn State TV Network. We've expanded this year so that we may bring the excitement of Penn State football into your homes. In support of this expansion, we ask for your help by joining our support club. With your membership, we'll send you one of these classic items of your choice. A Penn State sun visor, a tassel cap, a serving tray, or a Joe Paterno LP album. For your membership card, just send $11 to the Penn State TV Network. 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. State will go with number 38, Mike Mead at fullback. Number 25, Kurt Warner, the other running back. Hedinger is wide to the left. McCluskey, the tight end, is lined up on the right side. First down at the Penn State 20. Kurt Warner. About three yards as the defense closed in a hurry, and it'll be second down and seven. Number 73, the nose guard, does a run around technique on the center jaggers. Warner finds the hole, turns up field. He's always looking to break the big one. That's better. He covered that ball that time when he went into that crowd. Jim Romano, number 53, is now the center for Penn State. Second down, seven at the Penn State, 23. Warner to the outside. 
he might have picked up a first down by being just so alert. And he has it by about two feet across the 30. Now, that's just basic instinct. Originally, that was strung out. The, the, the sweep was strung out beautifully by the whole defensive left side of North Carolina State's uh, line. The linebacker is out there. And now he decides to take it to the outside. He wasn't, didn't take that inside cut. He went around the corner, got the first down. Time left in the first half, five minutes and 24 seconds, and Dale Tate elects to uh, take one of Penn State's three timeouts at this point, with a first down coming up in 10, just across the Penn State 30-yard line. How many passes has Dale completed so far today, George? Do you have that information there? We'll get it for you in a minute. Right? We'll tell you again, it's a, a rather humid day here at Raleigh. The temperature at game time, 72 degrees. The clouds are moving in. The uh, latest weather forecast prior to the game had the rains uh, scheduled to move in around 2.30. We had some rain this morning. What has Tate uh, done so far? Well, Dale Tate's two for six for 31 yards. He has, he'll have to do better now if they're going to put any points on the board. Uh, both teams on defense are jumping their defensive people out all over, all over the place. That time they had Gupton, number 90, in the football game. That's the first time he's been in on defense. First down, Penn State at the Penn State 30. On first down. Good catch. Brad Scoville pass delivered well to the 44-yard line of Penn State. There's a flag down on a play. Uh-oh. This, this has been a very successful play for Penn State all year. They fake the running play to one side. Tight end goes across the field, left to right, gets behind the linebacker. He's wide open, gets the first down, but it's all for naught. Holding penalty against Penn State. So forget a gain of 14 yards. So this is going to be about a what amounts to a 25-yard loss. Also, Ray, with the you know the, the sky's clouding up and the team that can put some points up in the first half you might be able to you know use the weather to its benefit in the second half if that predicted rain comes. There's referee Robert Wood who refused to be wired today. So sorry, ref, we don't know what you're saying. You're uh, one of those self-conscious individuals, and as a result, we don't know what you're saying today. It is first and 25 for Penn State. Well, actually a bit more than that. First and about 28. After a Penn State holding penalty, Penn State first down at the 13-yard line, and Kurt Warner gets only about a yard. Oh, the North Carolina State players uh, indicated there for a moment, the way I was reading them, that they may have had uh, recovered a fumble, but it turns out they were just enthusiastic about stopping the play. Well, they're all keyed up. A lot of the seniors, it's their last home game. It's homecoming weekend. And, uh, you know, they're playing inspired. Both defenses have played great so far. Second and 26 for Penn State. Hedinger out to the left, the only wide receiver. Mike Mead gets it to about the 17-yard line where he runs into senior linebacker Marion Gale of Hampton, Virginia. Penn State at this point here with a 3-0 lead and late in the second quarter, obviously electing to play it very conservative and not risking an interception. And Matt Suey now will bring in the play. I would, I'd love to see a screen right about now. May I do a little guessing? Well, <laughs> uh, there's a uh, just a proper time for such a play as a screen or something, a curl over the middle. Uh, uh, you have to be able to pound the ball over the middle once in a while. You can't just throw everything out to the sideline. Third. 22. And Matsui is wrapped up. Loss of a yard by linebacker Joe Hanna. And now. Uh, Penn State's hoping to catch North Carolina State napping in a passing situation. They try a quick pitch. They pull in the tackle. Hanna just plays it off. He has no room to go. So Giacomaro must punt from inside the Penn State five. Good hang time. Fair catch, Wilson at the 46.
This is Vickers. Well, Ray, I don't know. I would have called that a clip. They, Bradley was blocked from behind by that slot back. He actually pushed him. Or else he, let's see if we got to look at that. You can't push anybody from behind. It's a counter option with a quick pitch off to Vickers. Now watch Bradley being pushed by the slot man coming in. Gain on the play, five yards. Third and six, North Carolina State at the Penn State 49-yard line. Just over two minutes to play in the first half, and Penn State leading three to nothing. They're going to try to get the ball deep. And Smith gets absolutely nowhere, and Penn State is really playing inspired defense today. Matt Bradley, Leo Wisniewski, all were in on that play. Greg Jones, it's, it's uh, fourth like down. Many Many times when superstars are gone, you get team effort. Now there's no, he's trying to come out, fake the option. He wanted to hit the wide receiver deep. Well covered. Bradley forces him back to the inside. He can scramble. He's made a lot of big plays like that, but there's a bunch of white people who refuse to be denied, and they chase him all over the field. Nicely punting. Mike Gooman swarmed under inside the Penn State 20. Now Penn State has one minute and 23 seconds remaining in the first half. A 3-0 lead. The offensive performers here, the man who would normally handle the ball, will be Dale Tate at quarterback, number 17. Booker Bourne, number 48, at tailback. Oh. Matt Suey comes up in a very hesitant fashion, and he's been hurt. He's holding his left wrist, uh, Ray. You no, know, Matt's into everything. He threw a block on that play. One of the super performers in collegiate football, Matt Suey, closing in on John Capaletti's rushing totals. Oh, boy. So he'll be replaced by number 38, Mike Mead, at fullback. As the, uh, we have no idea how serious this injury is, except knowing Matt Suey, you know that it has to be at the very least extremely painful for him to leave the game. I'd venture to say you see Looks him like back a left in the shoulder. Half. Penn State will have a first down at the Penn State 19 yard line. One minute, 23 seconds left to play first half. The only score, a field goal by Herb Menhart on Penn State's first possession of this game. Hedinger is wide to the left. Slot right, Booker Moore. This is Booker Moore to the 20-yard line. Tried a little slot reverse, trying to break Booker Moore deep late in the first half. It was well played, well defensed by North Carolina State. Second and nine at the Penn State 20. And the ball to snap this time. Less than a minute will remain in the half. Second and nine. And no gain for Mike Mead. Well, I think Mike missed the hole. There was a big hole right up over the center. And that's what happened. Now when you, you take out the veteran, Suey, you're going to play with a... Another young, fine football player who will be a great one someday. Incidentally, now, North Carolina State has called timeout, so just one more timeout for North Carolina State here in the first half. Penn State will have a third and nine at the Penn State 20 as Meade was held to no gain. The last several weeks, we've been giving you some basic information concerning members of Joe Paterno's coaching staff with the thought in mind that you'd like to know about the men who build these Penn State football teams from year to year. We center your attention for this moment on J.T. White, who is beginning his 26th season on Joe Paterno's staff. He currently works with the interior defensive line. He had an unusual uh, playing record in that he... Uh, won football letters at both Michigan and Ohio State. J.T. White, season number 26 on the Penn State coaching staff. The Nittany Lion today is being, is overwhelmed by heat and humidity. 
All right, back to the action. Penn State third and nine at the Penn State 20 yard line. 42 seconds left in the half. Booker Moore gets about three yards. Now let's see if North Carolina State uses its final time out here. They'll probably go for the block. They'd like to get the three points back, and I think that's definitely what their strategy is, to get in position to kick a field goal. 34 seconds left in the half. The clock has not yet started to run. The referee has not yet signaled the ball ready for play. I guess North Carolina State must have taken a timeout. So Penn uh, North Carolina State will have no timeouts remaining once they get the football. Just over two minutes to play in the first half, and Penn State leading three to nothing. They're going to try to get the ball deep. And Smith gets absolutely nowhere, and Penn State is really playing inspired defense today. Matt Bradley, Leo Wisniewski, all were in on that play. Greg Jones, it's it's uh, fourth many, down. Many Many times when superstars are gone, you get team effort. Now there's no, he's trying to come out, fake the odds. You want to hit the wide receiver deep. Well covered. Bradley forces him back to the inside. He can scramble. He's made a lot of big plays like that, but there's a bunch of white people who refuse to be denied, and they chase him all over the field. Nicely punting. Mike Gooman swarmed under inside the Penn State 20. Now Penn State has one minute and 23 seconds remaining in the first half. A 3-0 lead. The offensive performers here, the men who would normally handle the ball, will be Dale Tate at quarterback, number 17, Booker Moore, number 48, at tailback. Yep. Matt Suey comes up in a very hesitant fashion, and he's been hurt. He's holding his left wrist, uh, Ray. He's, you no, know, Matt's into everything. He threw a block on that play. One of the super performers in collegiate football, Matt Sui, closing in on John Capaletti's rushing totals. Oh, boy. So he'll be replaced by number 38, Mike Mead, at fullback. As the, uh, we have no idea how serious this injury is, except knowing Matt Sui, you know that it has to be, at the very least, extremely painful for him to leave the game. I'd venture to say you see it looks him like back a left in the shoulder. Half. Penn State will have a first down at the Penn State 19 yard line. One minute, 23 seconds left to play, first half. The only score, a field goal by Herb Menhart on Penn State's first possession of this game. Hedinger is wide to the left. Slot right, Booker Moore. This is Booker Moore to the 20-yard line. Tried a little slot reverse, trying to break Booker Moore deep late in the first half. Was well played, well defensed by North Carolina State. Second and nine at the Penn State 20. And the ball to snap this time. Less than a minute will remain in the half. Second and nine. And no gain for Mike Mead. Well, I think Mike missed the hole. There was a big hole right up over the center. And that's what happens now when you, you take out the veteran Suey. You're going to play with a another young fine football player who will be a great one someday incidentally now North Carolina State has called timeout so just one more timeout for North Carolina State here in the first half Penn State will have a third and nine at the Penn State 20 as Meade was held to no gain the last several weeks we've been giving you some basic information concerning members of Joe Paterno's coaching staff with the thought in mind that you'd like to know about the men who build these Penn State football teams from year to year. 
We center your attention for this moment on J.T. White, who is beginning his 26th season on Joe Paterno's staff. He currently works with the interior defensive line. He had an unusual uh, playing record in that he uh, won football letters at both Michigan and Ohio State. J.T. White, season number 26 on the Penn State coaching staff. The Nittany Lion today is being, is overwhelmed by heat and humidity. All right, back to the action. Penn State third and nine at the Penn State 20 yard line. 42 seconds left in the half. Booker Moore gets about three yards. Now let's see if North Carolina State uses its final time out here. They'll probably go for the block. They'd like to get the three points back, and I think that's definitely what their strategy is, is get in position to kick a field goal. 34 seconds left in the half. The clock has not yet started to run. The referee has not yet signaled the ball ready for play. I guess North Carolina State must have taken a timeout. So Penn, uh, North Carolina State will have no timeouts remaining once they get the football. And the ball, uh, clock now will not start until the ball is snapped with 34 seconds left to play in the first half. Capacity crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. Homecoming day. North Carolina State leading the standings in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hopeful of a bowl bid. Bowl scouts are here today from the Hall of Fame Bowl, from the Garden State Bowl, among others. Both, both teams are still, uh, you know, uh, in the running for a bowl bid. It's uh, probably this outcome of this game is will be a, a major factor. North Carolina State has only one return man deep, Woodrow Wilson. Ralph Giacomaro, the freshman. That's his punt away. Goodwin drives Wilson all the way back to his own 31. And who oh, is he covered on that case at the North Carolina State 38-yard line with 23 seconds left, and that was Dan Rocco, the freshman from Altoona, who was the first downfield for Penn State. North Carolina State will probably try a couple of sideline cuts, get that ball upfield, and hope for one last shot at getting three points up in the game. Eddie Jackson is wide left. Tight end Lynn Dawson wide left. Mike Quick wide to the right. First and 10, North Carolina State. Scott Smith under a three-man rush. It was Nooski. And then Pete Kugler. Out there, they had a three-man rush and two of the three. Wisniewski and Kugler, who had volunteered for defense this week, are able to bring him down. Now, there's good play. And that could be very, very important in the second half. Penn State has had problems when rushing three people getting to the pass. But today, with these young kids, they're getting to the pass. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back with our halftime feature right after this. We're back with the second half with Penn State in control of the football. We're back with the second half with North Carolina State in control of the football. Brian Franco kicks. And it's into the end zone. There will be no run back. So a good kick by Brian Franco. George, I was just checking over these so-called quickie statistics, in other words, unofficial statistics at the end of the first half. Penn State's defense, with all of these changes, limited North Carolina State to just two first downs and total yardage of 70 by passing and running. That is great defense against a team that has moved the ball extremely well this year. And it should motivate that offense to get going. Scott Smith, number 11, the quarterback. And limited to about a half a yard was Andre Marks. Number 39, a freshman from High Point. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, he did not appear in the first half. Number 39, replacing uh, Billy Ray Vickers at that one running back position. We'll see in a moment. 
whether Vickers will be in the lineup. Yeah, Vickers is still in. No gain on the play, second and 10. Greg Jones is playing over the center, number 99. About two, three yards before Kubin and Mill. Lance Mel hit Wayne McLean, number 21. Well, that was a great defensive play by uh, Kubin and Mel. They ran the draw play. Uh, two wide receivers out here to the right. Come back, a little tailback draw. Watch Kubin close to the inside, play off the blocker, and Lance Mel's playing another outstanding game. North Carolina State has a third and six at the NC State 24-yard line. Early third quarter, Penn State leading 3-0. Vickers has a first down at the 32-yard line before Leo Wisniewski made the tackle. So North Carolina State has just its third first down of this game. And it took a great play by the quarterback to get that ball away. Kubin came on a blitz, almost got the quarterback, causing the fumble. He got it away to Vickers. He turned up inside Bradley and made the first down. And Vickers is shaken up on the play. And Dwight Sullivan, number 46, will check into the backfield. Kubin, Kugler, Jones, Wisniewski, Ron Walchak, that's the front five for Penn State, Griffiths and Mel, the linebackers, Giuseppe Harris at the one corner, and this is Dwight Sullivan getting a couple of yards. Ray, I'm waiting for the official to throw the flag on Dawson, number 80, the tight end. When he goes out into a slot, Bradley's playing one man for man, or he's playing that up to the wide side of the field. They're trying to run the option out there. Bradley's coming to the inside to take the man who gets the pitch, and he's getting blocked from behind. Gain of three that time. Second down seven, North Carolina State. Nowhere to go for number 21, Wayne McLean and Pete Kugler. Number 57 made a fine defensive play. Well, things can always change. Watch the dominance of the defense of the Penn State line right now. They be everybody beats their block. He has no place to go. He's got Kubin and, and Kugler both playing great games out there. North Carolina State is going to have to go to the air, and Penn State secondary has to hold up to continue this great effort. Third and six, North Carolina State. Kirk Hart at the one corner, Giuseppe Harris at the other corner. Grover Edwards is the free safety. And North Carolina State ran out of time and are forced to ask for a timeout. So NC State will have just two timeouts remaining. I'm glad about one thing. We're within about four or five minutes, George, of 2.30, and that's the hour at which the weatherman said heavy rains were going to come, in, uh, come into the area. And as of right now, the sun just broke through the cloud cover. Well, I guess he's just as wrong as those people who predicted a high-scoring game. I was one of them. I was one of them. I figured that the team that might have the ball last would win because uh, both teams have moved the ball well. And although Penn State has not been putting many points on the board uh, uh, of recent weeks, they have been playing uh, very well as far as moving the football. Continuing to center your attention on members of Joe Paterno's staff, John Rosenberg, beginning season number six, a graduate of Harvard in 1967. John coaches the defensive backfield. He also handles the defensive kicking game native of Newton, Massachusetts. John Rosenberg. Joe Paterno paces the sidelines. North Carolina State a third and six at the NC State 37-yard line. Eddie Jackson in motion to the right. Big rush. And the big rush forced Smith to unload in a hurry. He tried to get that ball on a screen to Dwight Sullivan. They tried to set up the screen, and Jones came from his tackle position. Jones smells the screen. He accelerates when he gets penetration over the center. He's going to put heat on the quarterback, Smith, before he can deliver the screen out to the right flat. So punt formation time for Isley. Grover Edwards almost blocked it. Fair catch, Mike Duman at the 27-yard line of Penn State. So Penn State's defense, which limited NC State to 70 yards in the first half, does its job again. The score, Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. Ray, as far as I'm concerned, key series. 
North Carolina State took the second half kickoff. The Lions held and forced a punt. Penn State has the ball. Penn State's defense held, forced a North Carolina State punt, and Penn State has the ball. Penn State first down at the Penn State 27. This is Booker Moore to the 31. A little over three yards for Booker Moore before he runs into John Stanton, number 73, who normally, in what North Carolina State thinks will be a running situation, Stanton, in that situation, plays the so-called nose guard or over the center. He plays a special technique. He plays a, what we call a runaround technique, meaning he takes a side. Second and about seven for Penn State. Tate can find no one open, and he's dropped by number 95, Brian O'Doherty, a senior defensive lineman from Rocky River, Ohio. Penn State going to the short side of the field, ran McCloskey up the sidelines and tried to slip Booker Moore into the flat. Now, Booker got out just a little too, little too quick, and uh, uh, State's defense saw him coming out, picked him up, there was no receivers, and Tate goes down for a big one. Third and 11, Penn State at the Penn State 26-yard line. Murkowski and Hedinger go wide to the left side. Third and 11. And Tate is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they blitzed him and went to man-to-man -man coverage. Penn State tried to run a pick play to the wide side of the field between the two wide receivers. Tate never had a chance to deliver the ball. Jock Amaro in to punt. Woodrow Wilson back to receive, and this now has definitely turned into a, a kicking game between Icey of North Carolina State, Jock Amaro of Penn State. The only score of this game, a Herb Menhart field goal on Penn State's first possession of the game. Good punt. Wilson all the way back at his own 27, gets by the first wave, look out. Out to the 39-yard line for North Carolina State, Woodrow Wilson. Now let's see if this Penn State defense playing in 72 degrees, high humidity, many players in unfamiliar positions. Mike Quick goes out to the right. I don't think Mike Quick has caught a pass today, and he was a leading receiver for the Wolfpack coming into today's, today's game. Well, one in the first half, by the way. Okay. This is Vickers, and oh, Pete Harris played that very, very well, and then help came over from Larry Kubin. Just like you draw it up on a board defensively against the counter option, put the heat on a quarterback, made him pitch the ball, Allowing your safety man to come up, rotate up, come up, make the tackle. Well done. Gain two yards, second down eight. Chet Parlavecchio, number 94, is playing one of the linebacker spots right now for Penn State. This is a second and eight play for the Wolfpack. Pass complete, close to a first down to D. Whitley, a freshman wide receiver from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. This is an excellent call. Penn State jumping around, they go to sprint out action, one receiver out. Whitley gets to the sideline. Good this tackle by Harris. Third and one, North Carolina State just short of the North Carolina State 49 yard line. Nine minutes to play third quarter, Penn State leading three nothing. And it looks like a North Carolina State first down run by Dwight Sullivan, number 46, a junior from Durham, North Carolina. He made it with something that's fast, straight ahead handoff. This is a T-series now for Penn State's defense. First down, number four of the game for North Carolina State. Well, Ray noticed that the last two plays have been to the short side of the field. We, we anticipated North Carolina State making some adjustments, coming back to the short side of the field, and they are. This is Sullivan to the outside. And he gets about four yards on first down to the Penn State 46-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second down six. 
North Carolina State has not had what could be termed a drive today. They have not been able to come up with first downs in a row. I think two in a row is the most they've had uh, thus far. Second and six. Whitley goes to the wide side, the right. Mike Quick is to the near side. Quick hand off to Sullivan. That hole closed in a hurry after a gain of about two by Griffith and Jones. Again, All-American Richard makes a great ba a track back block on the back, stealing block, and able in the back to get a little bit of a crease and make a couple of yards. North Carolina State has a third and three at the Penn State 43. Double tight ends for NC State. This is Smith, and he has a first down at the Penn State 38-yard line. And now North Carolina State appears to have a little bit of something going. And now Lance Mell, Ron Walchak, and Leo Wisniewski will check in to replace Parlevecchio. Yeah, Parlevecchio, Bob Flatten had a chance to play there for a while. And also Ray Witherspoon comes out. First down, NC State. By Smith. Oh, good play. Who was that from behind who made the tackle? Was I that think it's Steve Kugel. Griffith. Steve huh? Griffith. Well, it's Kugel, too. Uh, Pete right. Kugel coming, pinching down from the backside. That time, Penn State now is jumping the internal people, the internal down people, uh, not always showing uh, wide side strength. That time, they, they jumped the back and forth, and North Carolina State became confused, and they guessed wrong. Gain of one, second down nine, Penn State 38 yard line. Billy Vickers really was met by Matt Bradley, well, the Matt Johnstown, Pennsylvania sophomore. Well, he, he's been there. Let's take a look at it. That's young Bradley's playing great. All right, the counter option, they pull the guard, quarterback comes out here, Kuhlman gets blocked by Dawson, he pitches the ball, he has no place to run with it. Vickers is there, but so is Bradley. Rich D'Amico, number 66, comes into the defensive lineup for Penn State. North Carolina State has a third and 15 at the Penn State 43. Penn State has a 3-0 lead here in the third quarter. Smith with a lot of time. For Derry, daring him to run. And he's well short of the first down. It's about six yards to the Penn State 37. Hey, I'd like to mention once, once again that this uh, quarterback, Smith, has run for 10 touchdowns. He's a threat. And if you give him a little too much room, he can break it. Now North Carolina State's punter, John Isley, will, of course, try to pin Penn State deep with just over five minutes to play in the third quarter and Penn State with uh, just a 3 nothing lead. Very high. And Penn State will be deep back at their own 15-yard line. Actually, that, that's not too bad a position. The score, Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. After the second half kickoff, the teams exchange punts. Penn State has the ball. After the second half kickoff, the teams exchange punts. North Carolina State has the ball. Penn State first down at the Penn State 15-yard line. This is Kurt Warner. Out to the 21-yard line for a gain of six. Kurt Warner in the first half was the leading runner for Penn State with 46 yards and seven carries. Billy Vickers led North Carolina State on the ground with 47 yards in 10 carries. And a North Carolina State defender, linebacker Robert Abraham, a sophomore from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, number 53, came up limping. Well, that shows what a great back uh, Warner is. Abraham filled the hole from the inside. He was right there to make the tackle. Warner could put an extra burst on, a scramble for six more yards, and Abraham got hurt on it. Second and four, Penn State at the Penn State 21-yard line. Here comes Warner again. And he gets it out to about the 23-yard line. Penn State will have a crucial third and two. Penn State has not been successful today in converting third down situations, and this is a very important one. 
Well, they don't have good field position right now, and I think they'll be cautious. Uh, their defense seems to have things under control, but, uh, you know, anytime things can backfire. Suey is back in the game, by the way. That's good. Third and two at the Penn State 23. This is for the tight end, McCloskey. Right open. McCloskey at the North Carolina the State 30. Race. And he's brought down from behind at the 21-yard line. Mike Knoll saved a touchdown. Flag. And a penalty flag down. Or is it something out of the stands? Oh, that was a, a, frisbee, a frisbee out of the stands. Unfortunately, it was the same color as a penalty flag. Well, Ray, that time, I watched McCloskey, the freshman man. He's going to come from left to right. They fake the draw play to Warner. Now, he's got to come be at the top of your screen. He's wide open. This ball was a little underthrown, or this boy might have taken it all away. He has good speed for a big man six foot six. So Penn State has a first down at the North Carolina State 21-yard line with four minutes remaining in the third quarter. This is Warner. And a grudging three yards given up by the North Carolina State defense, and it'll be second down and seven at the NC State 18-yard line. Well, that play to McCloskey might have been the big play we were talking about, that the first team that got it could get that first touchdown, and uh, then the, other, the, the, uh, the opposing uh, team is going to have a lot of problems going into the fourth quarter. Booker Moore comes in at tailback, number 48. Vito Cobb was in for one play to give McCluskey a rest at tight end. Now McCluskey's back in. Second and seven, Penn State at the North Carolina State 18-yard line. Suey, looking for some daylight, gets it to the 15-yard line. And Penn State will have a third and four at the North Carolina State 15-yard line. Ray, almost a bad handoff between Tate and Suey, and that slowed up Matt a little bit, or else he might have got that first down. Now let's see how Penn State plays it here. Will they be conservative, believing that Menhart could make a field goal on fourth down? It is third and four. Same play. And Tate is hauled down. So it'll be Herb Menhart to try for his second field goal of the game, his tenth of the season, with just over two minutes to play in the third quarter. Well, North Carolina State went to the blitz. They anticipated pass. Man-to-man -man coverage. The two takes the look. This will be a field goal attempt of 37 yards. Mike Gooman, the holder. Rochelle, the snapper. And maybe we get a new football. Yes. If there's one handy. Well, I think that's a smart play by Rochelle. That ball might have been sweating in the moisture. It's hot out there, and he asked for a new football. 2.04 now left in the third quarter. Plenty of leg. And it is good. So Menhart is two for two. And the score now, Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing. North Carolina State drove to Penn State territory, but the Lion defense held again, and Penn State has the ball. A long pass from Tate to McCluskey. Moved the ball for Penn State deep into Wolfpack territory. It's fourth down, and Menhart will try Penn State's second field goal. After Penn State converted a field goal to make the score Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing, North Carolina State has the ball. Ray, if Penn State can get one turnover in the fourth quarter, I think they'll win this football game. But there's a big difference about only getting three as to the seven. Now North Carolina State does not have to feel any pressure. One touchdown still can win the game for them. Where Penn State had got ten points, they would have needed two scores. In the middle for North Carolina State is number 48, Chris Brown. He is flanked by Sullivan. From the North Carolina State eight-yard line, short of the 20-yard line, number 44 for North Carolina State is uh, listed as a defensive linebacker by the name of Adams. So check that out. Yep, Ricky Adams, a senior from High Point, was in on that kickoff return. 
Well, the last time North Carolina State had the ball, the Wolfpack had a well, pretty good drive underway before North Carolina State uh, was forced to give it up by way of a punt. Sullivan and Vickers, the running backs. Scott Smith, the quarterback. Vickers gets about four yards. Billy Ray Vickers. Just a minute and a half remaining in the third period. Todd Baker, a junior tight end from Andover, Ohio, is in. So uh, North Carolina State will go with the two tight ends now and one wide receiver. A grudging couple of yards for Dwight Sullivan. And North Carolina State will have a third and three. Ed Pritz, number 69, playing at the moment in the place of Steve Griffiths at the one linebacker spot, made the tackle. Ron Walchak is at the one defensive end. Larry Kubin, the other. Greg Jones playing in the middle, flank at the moment by Stupar and Wisniewski. Well, North Carolina State, I think, is going to go to uh, that three wide outs to take him Dawson and putting him in a slot. Rick Donaldson is in the game, number 92 at that hero position. Yep, first down for Smith. Out to the 35-yard line of North Carolina State. Well, Ray, that's exactly what they wanted to do. That's why they... Now, they, they moved Dawson to slot, hoping Penn State's defense will loosen up. It does, anticipating for a pass. Stuper, number 72, has the quarterback, overruns him, and he makes a big first down. At the North Carolina State 35-yard line, we'll have time for one more play in the third quarter if it is a running play. Vickers gets about six yards on first down to the 41-yard line. And right now, it appears that Penn State's defense might be tiring just a bit. Well, that's Stuper in there, uh, Ray. They're putting in Pete Kugler right now. And, and what Stuper's doing, Steve, is not uh, coming down to the inside. And they're just running the back right back right up uh, past him. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. There was no further scoring, and the quarter ended with the score. Penn State 6, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after this. Coming up at the end of the game, John Sanders and our scouting report on the Temple Owls, Penn State's next opponent. The Wolfpack defense held, forced a punt. North Carolina State now has... One of the super performers in collegiate football, Matt Sui, closing in on John Capaletti's rushing totals. Oh, boy. So he'll be replaced by number 38, Mike Mead, at fullback. As the, uh, we have no idea how serious this injury is, except knowing Matt Sui, you know that it has to be, at the very least, extremely painful for him to leave the game. I'd venture to say you see it looks him like back a left shoulder. Half. Penn State will have a first down at the Penn State 19-yard line. One minute, 23 seconds left to play first half. The only score, a field goal by Herb Menhart on Penn State's first possession of this game. Hedinger is wide to the left. Slot right, Booker Moore. This is Booker Moore to the 20-yard line. Tried a little slot reverse, trying to break Booker Moore deep late in the first half. It was well played, well defensed by North Carolina State. Second and nine at the Penn State 20. And the ball to snap this time. Less than a minute will remain in the half. Second and nine. And no gain for Mike Mead. 
Well, I think Mike missed the hole. There was a big hole right up over the center. And that's what happened. Now when you, you take out the veteran, Suey, you're going to play with a, another young, fine football player who will be a great one someday. Incidentally, now, North Carolina State has called timeout. So just one more timeout for North Carolina State here in the first half. Penn State will have a third and nine at the Penn State 20 as Meade was held to no gain. The last several weeks, we've been giving you some basic information concerning members of Joe Paterno's coaching staff with the thought in mind that you'd like to know about the men who build these Penn State football teams from year to year. We center your attention for this moment on J.T. White, who is beginning his 26th season on Joe Paterno's staff. He currently works with the interior defensive line. He had an unusual uh, playing record in that he uh, won football letters at both Michigan and Ohio State. J.T. White, season number 26 on the Penn State coaching staff. The Nittany Lion today is being, is overwhelmed by heat and humidity. All right, back to the action. Penn State third and nine at the Penn State 20 yard line. 42 seconds left in the half. Booker Moore gets about three yards. Now let's see if North Carolina State uses its final time out here. They'll probably go for the block. They'd like to get the three points back and I think that's definitely what their strategy is to get in position to kick a field goal. 34 seconds left in the half. The clock has not yet started to run. The referee has not yet signaled the ball ready for play. I guess North Carolina State must have taken a timeout. So Penn, uh, North Carolina State will have no timeouts remaining once they get the football. And the ball uh, clock now will not start until the ball is snapped with 34 seconds left to play in the first half. Capacity crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. Homecoming day. North Carolina State leading the standings in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hopeful of a bowl bid. Bowl scouts are here today from the Hall of Fame Bowl, from the Garden State Bowl, among others. Both both teams are still, uh, you know, uh, in the running for a bowl bid. It's uh, probably this outcome of this game is, will be a, a major factor. North Carolina State has only one return man deep, Woodrow Wilson. Ralph Giacomaro, the freshman. his punt away. Goodwin drives Wilson all the way back to his own 31. And who oh, is he covered on that case at the North Carolina State 38 yard line with 23 seconds left and that was Dan Rocco the freshman from Altoona who was the first downfield for Penn State. North Carolina State will probably try a couple of sideline cuts get that ball upfield Hope for one last shot at getting three points up in the game. Eddie Jackson is wide left. Tight end Lynn Dawson wide left. Mike Quick wide to the right. First and ten North Carolina State. Scott Smith under a three-man rush. It was Nooski. And then Pete Kugler out there. They had a three-man rush and two of the three. Wisniewski and Kugler, who had volunteered for defense this week, are able to bring him down. Now there's good play. And that could be very, very important in the second half. Penn State has had problems when rushing three people getting to the pass. And today, with these young kids, they're getting to the pass. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Penn State three, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back with our halftime feature right after this. Remember when Matsui ran this punt in for a touchdown, giving Penn State its first number one ranking in history? The spirit of Penn State's number one season, including their trip to the Sugar Bowl, has been captured masterfully in this three-color silkscreen print. Truly a collector's item suitable for framing. Chuck Ficina rides triumphantly through a field of Penn State blue atop the bronze Nittany Lion eyes flashing crimson. This is a priceless treasure for any true Penn State fan, but only 1,000 have been printed. This is a limited edition. You must act now. The print is valued at $15 and is being offered exclusively to Penn State fans on the TCS Satellite Network. To get your poster, send a check or money order for $17. That's $15 for the print and $2 for shipping and handling to Penn State Posters, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. That's 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068.
Penn State is ranked in the top 10 in football in 10 of the 13 seasons that Joe Paterno has been head coach. It took teamwork to achieve those rankings. And on another side of Penn State, team effort is also being used to help Penn State graduates realize their career ambitions. That's the goal of the Career Development and Placement Center. Career Development Placement Center is a, an office that is designed really to help students with their career planning, uh, placement concerns from the time they enter their uh, college of their choice until their graduate uh, or their graduation is uh, uh, almost in hand. And indeed, our services extend to alumni. Uh, we provide counseling where uh, students are, are free to come in and, and discuss their career problems with or their uh, educational uh, concerns. We also uh, teach some courses on decision making. When you're ready uh, to go out on the job market, how do you really uh, conduct a good, effective job search? We have a very complete career resource library. Okay, the staff also spends uh, a portion of their time developing programs such things as slide tape shows uh, about different options in the job market, audio tapes about each major that the university has, of which I think there must be a, about 145 different majors. Another large function for us is the on-campus recruiting program, where quite a large number of representatives from business, industry, government, education come on campus to interview prospective graduates. This past year, we'll have been visited here just at University Park campus by about 850 major employing agencies and corporations. The United States Steel over the years has recruited at Penn State quite successfully. We find that there are many hundreds of Penn State alumni in the corporation over half of which are engineering graduates. We find Penn State alum in our corporation as uh, treasury officers, credit managers, plant superintendents, mine general foreman, uh, even a vice president here and there. We have quite a few in our upper echelon. Educationally, uh, we couldn't ask for a better university. After all, uh, you take the business school that's accredited by the American Assembly Collegiate Schools of Business, the top organization in the United States for accreditation. The business school today, uh, as I recall in a recent periodical, was probably in the, the number one school on the rise in the nation, the business program. The engineering schools, all accredited by, accredited by Engineers Council for Professional Development. You don't have to worry. If you come in and talk to a double E, you know he's got a good fundamental engineering education. Industrial engineer, the same thing. Well, the reason we come to Penn State has been very good to us. Uh, as you know, Bethlehem is a nationwide corporation, but we have five of our largest operations here in this state. So naturally, we, had, we have a geographic interest. Secondly, it offers the kinds of degrees that we particularly look for. Engineering, accounting, business administration, the natural sciences, liberal arts. Annually, we have a so-called top 10 list. We just put this together to see where we're getting our people. And as I looked back the other day, since 1950, Penn State has been in number one spot. IBM has hired many Penn State graduates over a period of time. In fact, in terms of the number of graduates, college graduates that IBM hires, Penn State has to be one of the number one colleges in the country. And the reason for that is very simple. We have an excellent success record on the part of Penn State graduates in the IBM Corporation. And that makes us very interested in coming back to Penn State. Penn State graduates serving people and keeping the Pennsylvania State University top ranked with business, industry, government, and education. Westinghouse developed its ultrasonic flow meters to protect America.
By using sound to measure water flow, it predicted proper firing conditions for underwater missiles. Now, ultrasonic flow meters protect the delicate environment of the tundra by detecting possible breaks or leaks in the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. By innovation, a technology developed to protect America is helping protect America's environment. Westinghouse, a powerful part of your life. The cold and flu season is here. Daly's has all the flavor of fruit juice as though it's right from the fruit, plus added vitamin C. Daly's flavor is so fresh, it's like fruit now comes with twist-off caps. The reason? Daly's has never squeezed, crushed, or smashed fruit. Daly's just gives them a little hug. And that's what makes Daly's so deliciously different. You know what a little hug does for you. Taste what it does for fruit. Brian Franco kicks, and it's into the end zone. There will be no run back, so a good kick by Brian Franco. George, I was just checking over these so-called quickie statistics, in other words, unofficial statistics at the end of the first half. Penn State's defense, with all of these changes, limited North Carolina State to just two first downs and total yardage of 70 by passing and running. That is great defense against a team that has moved the ball extremely well this year. And it should motivate that offense to get going. Scott Smith, number 11, the quarterback. And limited to about a half a yard was Andre Marks. Number 39, a freshman from High Point. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, he did not appear in the first half. Number 39, replacing uh, Billy Ray Vickers at that one running back position. We'll see in a moment whether Vickers will be in the lineup. Yeah, Vickers is still in. No gain on the play, second and 10. Greg Jones is playing over the center, number 99. About two, three yards before Kubin and Mill. Lance Mell hit Wayne McLean, number 21. Well, that was a great defensive play by uh, Kubin and Mel. They ran the draw play. Uh, two wide receivers out here to the right. Come back, a little tailback draw. Watch Kubin close to the inside, play off the blocker, and Lance Mel's playing another outstanding game. North Carolina State has a third and six at the NC State 24-yard line. Early third quarter, Penn State leading 3-0. Vickers has a first down at the 32-yard line before Leo Wisniewski made the tackle. So North Carolina State has just its third first down of this game. And it took a great play by the quarterback to get that ball away. Kubin came on a blitz, almost got the quarterback, causing the fumble. He got it away to Vickers. He turned up inside Bradley and made the first down. And Vickers is shaken up on the play. And Dwight Sullivan, number 46, will check into the backfield. Kubin, Kugler, Jones, Wisniewski, Ron Walchak, that's the front five for Penn State, Griffiths and Mel, the linebackers, Giuseppe Harris at the one corner, and this is Dwight Sullivan getting a couple of yards. Ray, I'm waiting for the official to throw the flag on Dawson, number 80, the tight end. When he goes on into a slot, Bradley's playing one man for man, or he's playing that up to the wide side of the field. They're trying to run the option out there. Bradley's coming to the inside to take the man who gets the pitch, and he's getting blocked from behind. Gain of three that time, second down seven, North Carolina State. Nowhere to 
to go for number 21, Dwayne McLean and Pete Kugler. Number 57 made a fine defensive play. Well, things can always change. Watch the dominance of the defense of Penn State line right now. They be Everybody beats their block. He has no place to go. He's got Kubin and, and Kugler both playing great games out there. North Carolina State is going to have to go to the air, and Penn State secondary has to hold up to continue this great effort. Third and six, North Carolina State. Kirk Hart at the one corner, Giuseppe Harris at the other corner. Grover Edwards is the free safety, and North Carolina State ran out of time and are forced to ask for a timeout. So NC State will have just two timeouts remaining. I'm glad about one thing. We're within about four or five minutes, George, of 2.30, and that's the hour at which the weatherman said heavy rains were going to come, in, uh, come into the area. And as of right now, the sun just broke through the cloud cover. Well, I guess he's just as wrong as those people who predicted a high-scoring game. I, I was one of them. I was one of them. I figured that the team that might have the ball last would win well, because uh, both teams have moved the ball well. And although Penn State has not been putting many points on the board uh, uh, of recent weeks, they have been playing uh, very well as far as moving the football. Continuing to center your attention on members of Joe Paterno's staff, John Rosenberg, beginning season number six, a graduate of Harvard in 1967. John coaches the defensive backfield. He also handles the defensive kicking game. A native of Newton, Massachusetts. John Rosenberg. Joe Paterno paces the sidelines. North Carolina State a third and six at the NC State 37-yard line. Eddie Jackson in motion to the right. Big rush. And the big rush forced Smith to unload in a hurry. He tried to get that ball on a screen to Dwight Sullivan. They tried to set up the screen, and Jones came from his tackle position. Jones smells the screen. He accelerates when he gets penetration over the center. He's going to put heat on the quarterback, Smith, before he can deliver the screen out to the right flat. So punt formation time for Isley. Grover Edwards almost blocked it. Fair catch, Mike Gooman at the 27-yard line of Penn State. This bud's for every man who works with fire and steel. This bud's for you. <laughs> for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. Tate can find no one open, and he's dropped by number 95, Brian O'Doherty, a senior defensive lineman from Rocky River, Ohio. Penn State going to the short side of the field, ran McCloskey up the sidelines and tried to slip Booker Moore into the flat. Now, Booker got out just a little too, little too quick, and uh, uh, State's defense saw him coming out, picked him up, there was no receivers, and Tate goes down for a big loss. Third and 11, Penn State at the Penn State 26-yard line. Murkowski and Hedinger go wide to the left side. Third and 11. And Tate is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they blitzed him and went to man-to-man -man coverage. Penn State tried to run a pick play to the wide side of the field between the two wide receivers. Tate never had a chance to deliver the ball. Jock Amaro in to punt. Woodrow Wilson back to receive, and this now has definitely turned into a, a kicking game between Icey of North Carolina State, Jock Amaro of Penn State. The only score of this game, a Herb Menhart field goal on Penn State's first possession of the game. Good punt. 
Wilson all the way back at his own 27 gets by the first wave look out out to the 39 yard line for North Carolina State Woodrow Wilson now let's see if this Penn State defense playing in 72 degrees high humidity many players in unfamiliar positions Mike Quick goes out to the right. I don't think Mike Quick has caught a pass today, and he was a leading receiver for the Wolfpack coming into today's, today's game. Well, one in the first half, by the way. Okay. This is Vickers, and, oh, Pete Harris played that very, very well, and then help came over from Larry Kubin. Just like you draw it up on a board defensively against the counter option, put the heat on a quarterback, made him pitch the ball, Allowing your safety man to come up, rotate up, come up, make the pack. Well done. Gain two yards, second down eight. Chet Parlavecchio, number 94, is playing one of the linebacker spots right now for Penn State. This is a second and eight play for the Wolfpack. Pass complete, close to a first down to D. Whitley, a freshman wide receiver from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. This is an excellent call. Penn State jumping around. They go to sprint out action. One receiver out. Whitley gets to the sideline. Good this tackle by Harris. Third and one. North Carolina State just short of the North Carolina State 49-yard line. Nine minutes to play third quarter. Penn State leading 3-0. And it looks like a North Carolina State first down run by Dwight Sullivan, number 46, a junior from Durham, North Carolina. He made it with something that's fast. Straight ahead handoff. This is a key series now for Penn State's defense. First down, number four of the game for North Carolina State. Well, Ray noticed that the last two plays have been to the short side of the field. We, we anticipated North Carolina State making some adjustments, coming back to the short side of the field, and they are. This is Sullivan to the outside. And he gets about four yards on first down to the Penn State 46-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second down six. North Carolina State has not had what could be termed a drive today. They have not been able to come up with first downs in a row. I think two in a row is the most they've had uh, thus far. Second and six. Whitley goes to the wide side, the right. Mike Quick is to the near side. Quick hand off to Sullivan. That hole closed in a hurry after a gain of about two by Griffiths and Jones. Again, All-American, Richard, makes a great ba a crack back block on a back ceiling block, enabling the back to get a little bit of a crease and make a couple of yards. North Carolina State has a third and three at the Penn State 43. Double tight ends for NC State. This is Smith, and he has a first down at the Penn State 38-yard line. And now North Carolina State appears to have a little bit of something going. And now Lance Mell, Ron Walchak, and Leo Wisniewski will check in to replace Parlevecchio. Parlevecchio, Bob Flatten had a chance to play there for a while. And also Ray Witherspoon comes out. First down, NC State. count by Smith. Oh, good play. Who was that from behind who made the tackle? Was I think it's Steve Kugel. Griffiths. Steve huh? Griffiths. Well, it's Kugel, too. Uh, Pete right. Kugel coming, pinching down from the backside. That time, Penn State now is jumping the internal people, the internal down people, uh, not always showing a uh, wide side strength. That time, they, they jumped them back and forth, and North Carolina State became confused, and they guessed wrong. Gain of one, second down nine, Penn State 38-yard line. Billy Vickers really was met by Matt Bradley, well, the Matt, Johnstown, Pennsylvania sophomore. Well, he, he's been there. 
Let's take a look at it. That's young Bradley's playing great. All right, the counter option. They pull the guard. Quarterback comes out here. Kuban gets blocked by Dawson. He pitches the ball. He has no place to run with it. Vickers is there, but so is Bradley. Rich D'Amico, number 66, comes into the defensive lineup for Penn State. North Carolina State has a third and 15 at the Penn State 43. Penn State has a 3-0 lead here in the third quarter. Smith with a lot of time. Daring, daring him to run. And he's well short of the first down. He gets about six yards to the Penn State 37. Ray, I'd like to mention once, once again that this uh, quarterback, Smith, has run for 10 touchdowns. He's a threat. And if you give him a little too much room, he can break it. Now North Carolina State's punter, John Isley, will, of course, try to pin Penn State deep with just over five minutes to play in the third quarter and Penn State with uh, just a 3 nothing lead. Very high. And Penn State will be deep. Back at their own 15-yard line. Actually, that, that's not too bad a position. The score, Penn State 3, North Carolina State nothing. Ray Scott here for the Penn State TV Network. We've expanded this year so that we may bring the excitement of Penn State football into your homes. In support of this expansion, we ask for your help by joining our support club. With your membership, we'll send you one of these classic items of your choice. A Penn State sun visor, a tassel cap, a serving tray, or a Joe Paterno LP album. For your membership card, just send $11 to the Penn State TV Network, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. again and he gets it out to about the 23 yard line Penn State will have a crucial third and two Penn State has not been successful today in converting third down situations and this is a very important one well they don't have good field position right now and I think they'll be cautious uh, the defense seems to have things under control but uh, you know anytime things can backfire Suey is back in the game by the way that's good Third and two at the Penn State 23. This is for the tight end McCloskey. Right open. McCloskey at the North Carolina State the 30. Race. And he's brought down from behind at the 21-yard line. Mike Knoll saved a touchdown. Flag. And a penalty flag down. Or is it something out of the stands? Oh, that was a... A frisbee, a frisbee out of the stands. Unfortunately, it was the same color as a penalty flag. Well, Ray, that time, I watched McCloskey, the freshman man. He's going to come from left to right. They fake the draw play to Warner. Now, he's going to come be at the top of your screen. He's wide open. This ball was a little underthrown, or this boy might have taken it all away. He has good speed for a big man six foot six. So Penn State has a first down at the North Carolina State 21-yard line with four minutes remaining in the third quarter. This is Warner. And a grudging three yards given up by the North Carolina State defense. And it'll be second down and seven at the NC State 18-yard line. Well, that play to McCloskey might have been the big play we were talking about, that the first team that got it could get that first touchdown. And uh, then the, other, the, uh, the opposing uh, team is going to have a lot of problems going into the fourth quarter. Booker Moore comes in at tailback, number 48. Vito Cobb was in for one play to give McCluskey a rest at tight end. Now McCluskey's back in. Second and seven, Penn State at the North Carolina State 18-yard line. Suey looking for some daylight, gets it to the 15-yard line. And Penn State will have a third and four at the North Carolina State 15-yard line. Ray, almost a bad handoff between Tate and Suey. And that slowed up Matt a little bit, or else he might have got that first down. Now let's see how Penn State plays it here. 
Will they be conservative, believing that Menhart could make a field goal on fourth down? It is third and four. Same play. And Tate is hauled down. So it'll be Herb Menhart to try for his second field goal of the game, his tenth of the season, with just over two minutes to play in the third quarter. Well, North Carolina State went to the blitz. They anticipated pass, man-to-man -man coverage, and who takes the look. This will be a field goal attempt of 37 yards. Mike Gooman, the holder. Rochelle, the snapper. And maybe we get a new football. Yes. If there's one handy. Well, I think that's a smart play by Rochelle. That ball might have been sweat from the moisture. It's hot out there, and he asked for a new football. 2.04 now left in the third quarter. Plenty of leg. And it is good. the North Carolina State eight-yard line. Short of the 20-yard line, number 44 for North Carolina State is uh, listed as a defensive linebacker by the name of Adams. But check that out. Yep, Ricky Adams, a senior from High Point, was in on that kickoff return. Now the last time North Carolina State had the ball, the Wolfpack had a a pretty good drive underway before North Carolina State uh, was forced to give it up by way of a punt. Sullivan and Vickers, the running backs. Scott Smith, the quarterback. Vickers gets about four yards. Billy Ray Vickers. Just a minute and a half remaining in the third period. Todd Baker, a junior tight end from Andover, Ohio, is in. So uh, North Carolina State will go with the two tight ends now and one wide receiver. A grudging couple of yards for Dwight Sullivan. And North Carolina State will have a third and three. Ed Pritz, number 69, playing at the moment in the place of Steve Griffiths at the one linebacker spot, made the tackle. Ron Walchak is at the one defensive end. Larry Kubin the other. Greg Jones playing in the middle. Flank at the moment by Stupar and Wisniewski. Well, North Carolina State, I think, is going to go to uh, that's three wide outs. They're taking Dawson and putting him in a slot. Rick Donaldson is in the game, number 92 at that hero position. Yep, first down for Smith. Out to the 35-yard line of North Carolina State. Well, Ray, that's exactly what they wanted to do. That's why they... Now, they, they moved Dawson to slot, hoping Penn State's defense will loosen up. It does, anticipating for a pass. Stuper, number 72, has the quarterback, overruns him, and he makes a big first down. At the North Carolina State 35-yard line, we'll have time for one more play in the third quarter if it is a running play. Vickers gets about six yards on first down to the 41-yard line. And right now, it appears that Penn State's defense might be tiring just a bit. Well, that's Stuper in there, uh, Ray. They're putting in Pete Kugler right now. And, and what Stuper's doing, Steve, is not 
uh, coming down to the inside and just running the back right back right up uh, past him. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing. We'll be back right after this. Beaver Stadium, home of the nationally famous Nittany Lions. Hello, I'm Fran Fisher, here to tell you about another widely known university activity, Penn State's continuing education program. It's state, national, and international in scope. Being the world's most diverse continuing education program, Penn State has served people and organizations in every state and in many foreign countries. Doing it through its correspondence study courses, executive management programs, and its professional and technical conferences held at the Continuing Education Conference Center here in University Park and at other locations as well. Here are just a few examples of the occupations served through Penn State Continuing Education programs and services. If you would like to know more about Penn State Continuing Education, write Penn State at this address. Maggie is an Irish Terrier who belongs to a friend of ours in Buffalo. She's been eating Dad's puppy food since she's been nine weeks old. Like all pups, Maggie is super active and needs all the nutrition Dad's is giving her. High protein, fat, calcium, and phosphorus for developing strong bones and teeth and a healthy coat. Yes, Maggie's doing just fine on Dad's puppy food. Try it. I know you'll be happy with the results. <laughs> First and ten. The pass is intended, but way thrown out of bounds. Intended for Mike Quick. And uh, Giuseppe Harris was all the way with him, and Grover Edwards, the free safety, came over to help out. That's one of the few times today that North Carolina State has thrown on first down, but they, they showed run right away. That was a good throw. They made yardage on the option play. They fake it. They try to hit quick up the sidelines where everybody's hurt Penn State. Giuseppe Harris played it perfectly. He had good body position uh, between it, uh, the uh, offensive receiver and the ball. Bo Ryan, the head coach at North Carolina State, pacing the far sidelines. Second and ten for North Carolina State at their own 45. This is Vickers, look out, and he has a first down at the Penn State 44-yard line. Three first downs in a row for North Carolina State. Notice again, two wide receivers to the bottom of the screen, loosen up the defense. Vickers cuts it back over the center, finds a big hole. They got to shut that off with the backside pursuit. Andre Marks, number 39, a freshman fullback, replaces Vickers, who may be tiring just a bit. There's Vickers, and there's Joe Paterno. In motion is Eddie Jackson, a wide receiver. This is Marks, the freshman, and he finds good running room for nine yards. Fumble. Was there a fumble? Penn State has the ball. Penn State has. I never saw that. The well, ball popped loose, and it's recovered by Matt Bradley, who yep. intercepted early in the game. And Bradley, uh, Ray, comes, he, he comes up limping. I saw that all the way. Now, it was a, a well-executed sweep into the side of motion. A good cut here. Now, as his knee hits the ground, he scrambles and lets the ball go. That could have been called either way. Bradley, man on the spot, dives in, comes up with the ball. Where he hurt his knee, I don't know. At any rate, Matt Bradley, who recovered, sustained a slight injury. And he has just been outstanding today. Matt Bradley, he intercepted, and that interception early in the game led to Penn State moving in for their first field goal. Now he recovers a fumble. This is the third turnover by North Carolina State, and Penn State has the ball now when the play resumes after this timeout because of the injury to Bradley. Penn State will have it at the Penn State 29-yard line with 13.46 left in the game. And it's a fortunate play for Penn State. The score, Penn State 6, North Carolina State nothing. I'm Ray Scott speaking to you for the TCS Satellite Network.
I'm honored to be able to share with you the action-packed sports programming offered through the TCS Satellite Network. I'm delighted that you're with us today, and I hope you're enjoying today's event. After all, that's what really is important. And we're interested in what your thoughts are. Drop us a line. Write TCS Satellite Network, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. We'll be waiting to hear from you. One official overrule the other. The ball comes back, and it's going to be second and 10, Penn State, at the Penn State 29-yard line. It is imperative here for Penn State to get at least a couple of first downs. Well, they were fortunate to get that fumble before because North Carolina State was building up some momentum. Now they lost, and now it's Penn State's job here to put together a couple of first downs. Second and 10, Penn State at the Penn State 29. Suey, number 32. Coles, number 20, the running backs. The fourth tailback used today by Penn State is Coles. This is Coles, and he has a first down at the 40-yard line. A big first down. Joel Coles, who last week moved over from defense to offense. Now that time, Tate threw the ball with a lot of authority. You have to do that on that short stuff. You can't let it hang because the... The secondary is going to close in on a receiver. You've got to drill a ball right now as soon as that receiver is open. Hedinger goes to the wide side. Defensive back Eric Williams moves out with him. Uh -oh. That was tight end Mike McCluskey who moved prematurely, and this will cost Penn State five yards. The big freshman made a mistake. Can't afford that in games like this, Mike. It's second, or rather first and 15 now from the Penn State 34-yard line. Defensive change. Rick Etheridge checks in at linebacker. Following a five-yard penalty for illegal procedure against Penn State, Penn State has it first and 15 at the Penn State 34-yard line. He got him. This is for Hedinger. Oh, off his right hand at the North Carolina State 32-yard line. Now, there's an occasion where, well, if he had Coles open in the flat, and I'm sure he's got Coles in there because he's a, he's a good receiver, but if he just took a little off the ball, allowed that deep receiver to run under it, he just drilled it deep down the field, and Hedden's never had a chance. But. Coming up at the end of the game, we will have our player of the game again, as presented by Mellon Bank, Daly's Juice Products, Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Budweiser and Michelob Beers. And in my own mind, I'm not ready to say it out loud, but I have my selection for player of the game for Penn State. But right now, second and 15 Penn State at the Penn State 34-yard line. Here comes a blitz. 42. Beautiful play. Kurt Warner breaking tackles. They changed tailbacks there uh, between plays, and it's out to the Penn State 43-yard line. That was a good gain, a gain of eight yards. All right. Watch number 42 from North Carolina State. Bottom of your screen comes on the blitz. They run the perfect play to draw play. He gets good blocking. I thought Kurt might break this, but he had a hold of his tail. And he gets an eight yard. For Penn State, third and seven at the Penn State 43. Time left in the game, just under 13 minutes, and Penn State with a six to nothing lead. Rakowski wide to the left, Hedinger to the right. Good protection. Not quite a first down at the 48-yard line. He missed it by two yards. And a North Carolina State defender comes up limping, Simon Gupton, number 90. Faking a draw play. They need three yards, uh, for the, seven yards for the first down. Can't find a receiver open. Puts the ball away. Decides to run for it. He picks up Munchak as a blocker. Convoy tries to turn up tough and just misses the first down. Giacomaro to punt. Oh, does he hit this one? And it's fielded inside the 10. 
And as a result, uh-oh, there goes a penalty flag down at the 15-yard line. Let's see what we have. It's against North Carolina State. It's against North Carolina State. This could be a very costly penalty against North Carolina State. That ball was run out to the 17-yard line. Well, let's see what referee Robert Wood has. We'll tell you again, we won't be able to hear him because our referee today, for his own reasons, refused to wear a microphone. The score, Penn State 6, North Carolina State nothing. Ray Scott here for the Penn State TV Network. We've expanded this year so that we may bring the excitement of Penn State football into your homes. In support of this expansion, we ask for your help by joining our support club. With your membership, we'll send you one of these classic items of your choice, a Penn State sun visor, a tassel cap, a serving tray, or a Joe Paterno LP album. For your membership card, just send $11 to the Penn State TV Network, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. Good run, first down, out across the 20-yard line for North Carolina State. Well, that's that counter option. They're making him pitch the ball right now, and they're getting a good block from the slot man on the outside. Let's see if we can watch the block of the offensive slot man. There's the fake, a quick pitch here. They force the pitch. Hooban forces the pitch. Sullivan has the ball. There's the kick-out block on Donaldson. The runner just came in. That was Chucky Kennedy, a sophomore from Maysville, North Carolina. First down at the North Carolina State 23. On first down, Smith is nailed by Kubin inside the 15. Larry Kubin comes up with a big play, number 74 for Penn State. Well, State took a big chance on that North Carolina State, trying to catch Penn State sleeping. Hope to get a, a, a receiver deep. Again, fake that little counter option. Now he wants to throw deep on the run. He, there's good coverage. There's no place to go. Hooven puts him down for a big loss. The man who coaches those defensive ends and outside linebackers is Jim Williams, beginning his third season on the Penn State staff. He's a graduate of Penn State in 63. Turn it over. Back at the 14 or 15 yard line, it appears that North Carolina State got the ball back. Well, they did, but Penn State's defense is playing like the old Penn State team. I said one turnover, I think, in the fourth quarter could, could, be, could be the game. Uh, this time on the counter option series, they give the ball to the dive back. Kubin pinches down from the inside. Mel comes in, it's a free ball. North Carolina State comes up with one turnover, will change this game. Completely in Penn State's favor. It's third and 18 for North Carolina State with nine and a half minutes left in the game. Scott Smith, good protection. A lot of time. Short of a first down is Mike Quick. Well, Mike Quick did not realize where he was. Where he, was. he went out of bounds. Two and a half yards shy of a first down. Oh, why coaches get great. He's got, he runs between double coverage, the cornerback and the safety. The ball is very well thrown. He has plenty of time. He comes back and runs out of bounds beyond, beneath the, the uh, first down marker. Fourth down, eyes lead a punt. Good punt. Fair catch. Mike Gulman, Penn State 28-yard line. Now the pressure moves to the Penn State offense and the North Carolina State defense. The voting for that player of the game award, by the way, there are a total of uh, nine votes. Four votes from the press. David Baker, Sports Information Director at Penn State, gets a vote. Fran Fisher, Jim Tarman, the radio broadcasters, our production group in the television uh, truck gets a vote. George gets a vote, and I get a vote. My vote, as of right now, George, will go, if I had to vote at this instant, and I don't, I can wait a little while, but I'd vote for Matt Bradley right now. Well, it's going to go to somebody on defense. I'm not sure. i got a couple of thoughts on it. All right. Kurt Warner. No gain. North Carolina State swarming defense. 
No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten, and a North Carolina State player is down. At this point in the game, Penn State must hang on to the football. We're going to try to break a big one, either a, a run or pass, get the ball in better field position, and keep uh, North Carolina State deep if they have to punt. Senior linebacker Marion Gale from Hampton, Virginia, was injured on that play. He had been injured before and just came back to action today after having sustained an earlier season injury. Penn State will have a second and 10 at the Penn State oh, between 28 and 29 yard line. The exact time remaining in the game, eight minutes and 53 seconds. Penn State is leading by virtue of two Herb Menhart field goals. And Mike Gooman will come into the backfield at tailback to replace Kurt Warner. appears to have sustained an injury to his left leg. A second down and 10 play coming up for Penn State. You know, Penn State, just in one play in the first half, showed an unbalanced slot formation. I know they must have some things they want to do off that. And uh, it seemed when, to me if they had any, you know, tricks in the bag, it would be not a time to pull it out because two key first downs here could be the ball game. Hedinger is the only wide receiver. Second and 10. Well overthrown. Oh, boy. Brad Scoville, the intended receiver. Tate released just as he was hit. It's going to be third and ten. The middle appeared to be open in a, at rather short range. It's a short range, Ray. They played Scoville deep. Uh, we've talked about this among ourselves. I, you know, we talked with Joe even about coming across that middle and pounding that ball in. But when you, when you deliver like that, that ball's got to be thrown with great accuracy, velocity, and a, and a quarterback that's sure of himself, and, and Dale hasn't shown that so far. Third and ten play. Two wide receivers. Green. This is Kurt Warner. He did well to break those first tackles, although shy of a first down. He's out across the 36-yard line. Once again, the pressure goes on to the punter and this... The kicking team, the special unit team. Well, he made two great moves and almost made that play himself. And as they say, this time they almost made it. But again, pressure on Giacomaro, pressure back on Penn State's defense. Eight minutes left in the game as Giacomaro prepares to punt. Woodrow Wilson deep, return man for North Carolina State. Rochelle takes a long time to throw a snap back. Not too high this time. Wilson at his own 23. Ron Walchak was there, along with Dan Rocco. And North Carolina State is inside the Wolfpack 30. Again, we want to apologize for not being able to provide our viewers with the usual variety of camera angles. North Carolina State's athletic department would not permit our crew to set up the necessary technical facilities that we're accustomed to. It left us without an end zone camera with no sideline camera. We apologize. We hope you'll understand the situation totally beyond our control. First down NC State. North Carolina State 28-yard line. Midway fourth quarter. Smith turns it in to about a five-yard, six-yard gain to the North Carolina State 34-yard line. Well, they, they had him for a loss. He showed his competitiveness. Now, this kid Smith, at times in the season when North Carolina State was down, he took it upon himself, and he he, he ran the ball down, uh, down the field and got the, the winning touchdown. Two wide receivers to the left on second and four. This is Eddie Jackson in motion. A sweep, a quick pitch. Good job. Good by play by Walchak. He hit down the ball carrier. Chuckety, Chucky Kennedy, a sophomore from Maysville who did not play in the first half. In fact, he didn't play, didn't play in the third quarter. Well, Walchak, he's a walk-on, and he's a senior, and he hasn't played much. And, and uh, as I said, Penn State is playing, overplaying the wide side of the field, and they're coming right at Walchak here, and he just makes a great defensive football play. For North Carolina State, it is third and two at the Wolfpack 36-yard line. First down for Smith at the North Carolina State 43-yard line. And this is what he's done before. He takes it upon himself. They got what they wanted. They're almost only running two plays from that formation. Uh, they're running that counter option. He'll pitch it or he'll keep the ball. They might throw a quick short pass off it. 
First down, North Carolina State at the Wolfpack 43. Six minutes, 15 seconds left in the game. Penn State leading six to nothing. One wide receiver, two wide receivers to the right, quick. Now Jackson goes in motion to the left. This is Kennedy. Look out. Oh, he's a good runner. He's at the Penn State 49-yard line. And you can just feel North Carolina State building up some momentum here. And, of course, this capacity homecoming crowd urging them on. That was a gain of eight yards. Uh, here's a repeat. The same play. Motion, getting a blocker out in front, and a quick pitch to Kennedy. Now, they, they're trying to kick out on Walchak, and he's making his cut up in sight. And Urquhart kind of misses the tackle. Now, Penn State has to gamble a little bit here. Second and two. I don't know whether they picked up a first down that time or not at the Penn State 47 and a half yard line. When I say gamble, Ray, I'm, not, I'm talking about they're going to have to gamble a little bit with their defensive scheme, hoping to come up with throw from North Carolina State for a loss and break their momentum down. They just can't sit back and allow this kid to run this counter option, quick pitch series as he's running right now because they're getting four and five yards a shot. They got to make something happen. They need a big play. Third down and less than a yard for a first down with less than five minutes remaining. Smith keeps, gets a first down at the Penn State 44. 45, perhaps, but a first down it is. And he's eating up the clock. Now, North Carolina State has two timeouts remaining. Penn State has its full allotment of three. To the left, quick. To the right, D. Whitley. Number eight. Kennedy. Just a couple of yards. Now that's what they, that particular play, Penn State came with an outside blitz. So Bradley came, the defensive end, Coolman came, the tackle came, and they shut off that play. And of course, every running play now takes up 30 seconds, barring a penalty. Penn State's run. Or, or a timeout. And they better be very alert now that they don't, they'll fake the counter option play. Try to hit one of their receivers deep. They know they don't have too much time left. Now less than four minutes remaining. Urquhart on this short side better be careful. Uh-oh. Reverse. Here's a reverse. They have it. Yeah, they've got it. Number 48 went in as a wide receiver. Now he's a running back. Chris Brown. And there was actually a loss of a yard, but what might be more important, a loss of 30 seconds on that clock. All right, North Carolina State's trying to come up with a big play, throws the quick pitch, and then runs the reverse from it. Coming around, Penn, Penn State's got excellent penetration by a few people there, and the play goes to North. Griffith was in exactly perfect defensive position to make the play. This might be the biggest third down of the game. It's third and eight at the Penn State 43. Out of, bounds, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Caught by Quick. Good defensive play by Urquhart. Now Bo Ryan has to make a decision on fourth and eight. Will he kick the ball away with 3.07 remaining? Will he gamble for a first down? No sign that they're going to put in the punting team. They're going for a first down on fourth and eight. Uh, and I look for them to, to, to go for that draw play or a screen. And I hope Penn State's alert for the screen or any kind of a razzle-dazzle play because... Let's face it, Ray, this is the football game right here for Penn State. North Carolina State has been forced to ask for a timeout. The Wolfpack has but one remaining with the score. Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing.
I think if you put the blitz on him, he's not used to throwing under the heat. They could they could get an incompleted pass, and Penn State would have the football in a terrific position. Right now, it's really a battle of uh, strategies between the coaching staffs. That's exactly what's going on. Lance Mel has uh, huddled with the Penn State staff. Scott Smith with Bo Ryan and the. Series as he's running right now because they're getting four and five yards a shot. They got to make something happen. They need a big play. Third down and less than a yard for a first down with less than five minutes remaining. Smith keeps, gets a first down at the Penn State 44. 45 perhaps, but a first down it is. And he's eating up the clock. Now, North Carolina State has two timeouts remaining. Penn State has its full allotment of three. To the left, quick. To the right, D. Whitley. Number eight. Kennedy. Just a couple of yards. Now that's what they, that particular play, Penn State came with an outside blitz. So Bradley came, the defensive end, Coolman came, the tackle came, and they showed off that play. And of course, every running play now takes up 30 seconds, barring a penalty. Penn State's running. Or, or a timeout. And they better be very alert now that they don't, they'll fake the counter option play try to hit one of the receivers deep. They know they don't have too much time left. Now less than four minutes remaining. Urquhart on this short side better be careful. Uh-oh. Reverse. Here's a reverse. They have it. Yeah, they've got it. Number 48 went in as a wide receiver. Now he's a running back. Chris Brown. And it was actually a loss of a yard, but what might be more important, a loss of 30 seconds on that clock. All right, North Carolina State's trying to come up with a big play, throws the quick pitch, and then runs the reverse from it. Coming around, Penn, Penn State's got excellent penetration by a few people there, and the play goes to North. Griffin was in exactly perfect defensive position to make the play. This might be the biggest third down of the game. It's third and eight at the Penn State 43. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Caught by Quick. Good defensive play by Urquhart. Now Bo Ryan has to make a decision on fourth and eight. Will he kick the ball away with 3.07 remaining? Will he gamble for a first down? No sign that they're going to put in the punting team. They're going for a first down on fourth and eight. Uh, and I look for them to, to go for that draw play or a screen. And I hope Penn State's alert for the screen or any kind of a razzle-dazzle play because... Let's face it, Ray, this is the football game right here for Penn State. North Carolina State has been forced to ask for a timeout. The Wolfpack has but one remaining with the score. Penn State six, North Carolina State nothing. I think if you put the blitz on him, he's not used to throwing under the heat. They could they could get an incompleted pass, and Penn State would have the football in a terrific position. Right now, it's really a battle of uh, strategies between the coaching staff. That's exactly what's going on. Lance Mel has uh, huddled with the Penn State staff. 
Scott Smith with Bo Ryan and the North Carolina State staff. Well, Bo Ryan has to make a decision whether to go short for the first down or to go deep and maybe get a touchdown. Penn State has to make a decision whether to play deep or play short or to rush free or to go with the blitz. Whitley left, quick to the right, fourth and about eight. Up, oh, there's no blitz. Smith with all the time in the world, and he's throwing his... Is it caught? It is caught by Mike Quick at the Penn State 13-yard line. There oh. was a clutch play. He's done it all year, and this is what I was afraid of. He got out of the rush, scrambled. How great quarterbacks can do this. He gets out of this three-man rush, goes off, goes to his left, shows a lot of poise, but quick coming right to left, drills the football in there. North Carolina State's in great position. Penn State has a player injured on the play with two minutes and 47 seconds remaining. North Carolina State with its really only scoring threat of this game. I watch quick. He's coming down. He goes an out, up and out cut to the sidelines. He sees that the quarterback's in trouble. Does a wise thing. He goes back towards his quarterback across the uh, field and gets that ball in scoring position for North Carolina State. Penn State defensive back Stuart McMunn was the player injured on that play. Now when play resumes Grover Edwards injured? I'm sorry, not McMunn. Grover Edwards. That ball had to be perfectly thrown. He threw the ball perfectly into the center of the field and Quick made the key catch. Now North Carolina State will have a first down at Penn State's 13 yard line. Two minutes and 47 seconds remaining in this game. This has been NC State's only threat of the game. And it comes on a fourth down and eight pass from Scott Smith to his favorite receiver, Mike Quick, who is only a sophomore from Hamlet, North Carolina. Grover Edwards was the player injured. He'll be replaced by McMunn. And the real tragedy of it is that there was excellent coverage on Quick initially until Smith went into the scramble and then he ran away from the coverage. All right, following a long pass completion on fourth down, North Carolina State has a first and 10 at the Penn State 13-yard line. 2.34 left to play in the game. Look out, Scott Smith getting to the outside. Ridden out of bounds at the five-yard line. And this is what we said he can do. And got a little help for the official there. The official inadvertently screened out a couple of the Penn State defenders. Watch it now. Now uh, Smith's taking it upon himself. He wants to keep the ball, sees the cutback. Going for the corner, the official screened off some of the plays. Eric Watt makes the save, uh, touchdown saving tackle. Second down and three at the Penn State five. 223 now left in the game. And a very short game for Dwight Sullivan. I don't think he picked up a first down. Let's see where the ball is placed down. At the Penn State three and a half yard line, it will be third and one. And the clock is running, and when the ball is snapped, less than two minutes will remain in this game. Well, eventually they will run the option play, and Smith will try to keep the ball. One wide receiver, Eddie Jackson to the left. Third and one at the Penn State three and a half yard line. Is it a first down? It's yes. very, very close. Well, from here it looks like he got it. Well, you never can tell. Very close. We may have a measurement. We will, says referee Robert Wood. Well, of course, a significant factor of this is it's killing the clock and eliminates possibly the Penn State of coming back and getting a field goal. First and goal to go at the Penn State two and a half yard line. One minute and 39 seconds remaining in this game. Penn State with what is now a very shaky six nothing lead. Wide to the right, D. Whitley. Everybody else in tight. Six 
Smith keeps. Does he score? Yes. yes. Scott Smith scores with 118 left in the game. So now it boils down to an extra point attempt with 118 remaining. Well, they just, he just that was keeper all the way. Smith had no intention to do anything but keeping the ball, getting the end zone. Watch them pull number 76, Dieterich. He just follows Dieterich, turns up tough. He's a tough run around that goal line. Makes a big touchdown. So now, Nathan Ritter will try to break the tie. And North Carolina State has a one-point lead with 118 left to play in the game. Now, we should keep in mind that Penn State has all three of its timeouts remaining. Well, Ray, they have to get the ball pretty much up to about the 35, 40 yard line on this kickoff return. Then they got in a, uh, they're in a position to get a couple of sideline cuts, to get a couple of first downs, and possibly kick a game winning field goal. Now, let's uh, we'll check very carefully now who the run back men will be for Penn State. I see number 20, Joel Coles. And you, and you number see, 25, Kurt Warner. And you might see a squib kick here by North Carolina State. Uh, meaning kicking it on the ground to prevent Penn State and uh, giving them the opportunity to run it back. Now those people right now in the middle of the formation for Penn State better be ready to pick up that squib kick if it is a squib kick. Warner and Coles deep. North Carolina State having failed to mount any scoring threat at all came up with the big play on fourth and eight a pass from Smith to Quick to the Penn State 13-yard line, and Smith wound up scoring with 118 remaining, and that's exactly how much time remains right now. A deep kick. Kurt Warner. And he gets it out to about the 24-yard line. Dale Tate will be the last to go to the huddle with now one minute and 12 seconds remaining. Rakowski and Hedinger will be the wide receivers. Kurt Warner will be the tailback. They have to move the ball approximately 40 yards in a minute and 17 seconds to have even an opportunity to get a, I mean 50 yards to get an opportunity for a field goal. Slot left is Warner. And Dale Tate says, hey, we can't hear the signals being called. And you can bet your life at this capacity homecoming crowd could care less. Seven, six, North Carolina State. Some of the NC State players now holding up their hands saying, hey, cool it. Matt Suey will be the only running back in position, that is, behind the quarterback. Kurt Warner will be a slot back left. Strictly a, a passing formation. Tate on first down. This is to Warner. Short gain, just about three yards. Try to hit Kurt on a little delay, hoping he'd break it up the middle or get a chance to run for those far sidelines. But to no avail, North Carolina State, obviously North Carolina State knows the threat that Kurt Warner is and has a linebacker on him man for man. Our player of the game is Pete Kugler. This year's award sponsored by our friends at Mellon Bank. And there he is, number 57. Daly's Juice Products and Anheuser-Busch St. Louis. Brewers of Budweiser and Michelob Beers. Again, our voting today, four members of the press covering the game, the sports information director of Penn State University, our production group and the television truck, of course. George gets a vote, I get a vote, and the radio broadcasters, Fran Fisher and Jim Tarman, get a vote. Penn State has two timeouts remaining. It, that last play, that little uh, flip pass to Kurt Warner, picked up two yards. Second and eight, Penn State, at the Penn State 26-yard line. One minute and two seconds left in the game. Pettinger to the right, Tracy Hall to the left, and again, Warner is a slot back to the left. Incomplete. Big hit was put on the intended Penn State receiver, and he's down. 
Well, he had to go up for the ball. I think it was Scott Hedinger. He was Scott really Hedinger. hit hard. It was a catchable ball, but he had to go up. Let's take a look at it. Tate rolls to his right. Finds Hedinger, does a curl by the sideline. Throws a little high. Forces Scott to get up off his feet. Gets, takes a good, good hit and drops the ball. Now Penn State will have a third and eight at the Penn State 26-yard line. With 55 seconds left in the game, Terry Rakowski is going to bring in the play. And he will replace Scott Hedinger, who is still receiving attention over there. Well, I'm sure that that fourth and eight pass from Scott Smith to Mike Quick will be reviewed over and over again by... Well, you know, it's happening more and more. You know, and let's not get in, which is uh, too much second guessing here, but the... Uh, you get a quarterback who can run around like that, and uh, he, you know you don't get the heat on him. He gets out of contain. Then the pressure now delivers onto your secondary. Uh, they start sliding across field with him, and leaving the receivers uh, to get open lanes. And the receivers are coached. Uh, when your quarterback scrambles, you get into a new route, try to find him, try to link up with him, and that's exactly what happened. And that set up the touchdown. Booker Moore will be the tailback. Scott Hedinger, we are happy to say, is able to walk off the field under his own power. So Hedinger is out. Rakowski and Tracy Hall will be the wide receivers. Booker Moore will be the other running back other than Matsui. Tate has gone all the way at quarterback. Penn State a third and eight at the Penn State 26-yard line. 55 seconds left in the game. Penn State has two timeouts remaining. Hall goes right. Rakowski comes left. A third and eight play. This is a first down to the 41-yard line for Brad Scoville. That stops the clock. The first down until the officials declare it ready for play. Penn State going with their... Two-minute drill. They will not take any time here for a huddle. A key first down. The referee steps in and says, hey. I'm not sure why referee Robert Wood wanted to. But now we're ready to go. The clock starts again. 40 seconds left. Off the hands of Booker Moore. That stops the clock with 37 seconds left. Well, that really wasn't too much of a significance. They just wanted to stop the clock. But again, that middle, if they could get somebody deep, they can protect the pass long enough and get a wide receiver, uh, preferably deep and across the middle, uh, upfield, they, they might have a shot at a field goal. Second and 10, Penn State at the Penn State 41-yard line. 7-6, North Carolina State. 37 seconds remaining. Rakowski to the right and Hall to the right. Good protection. And a fine defensive play by linebacker Rick Etheridge drops Tate all the way back at the Penn State 25-yard line for a loss of 16 yards. Well, Etheridge came on a blitz. Uh, Dale rolled away from his protection. He didn't stay in his pocket. He's got to stay in the pocket, move in. No receivers throw it out of bounds. Now there reflects a difference in the res respective strategies of the two coaching staffs. When North Carolina State was faced with what had to be a passing situation on fourth and eight, Penn State elected not to blitz and pressure the passer. When Penn State was in a situation where they had to pass, North Carolina State elected to blitz, and they come up with a 15-yard loss. Now, there's a difference in the thinking at that particular moment of the two coaching staff. I, I couldn't concur with you more, I, uh, especially when you're going against a team that's not a pro-orientated orientated passing club. Who, they don't swing their backs out of the backfield and, and do a lot of that kind of thing, and they're not used to reading too many blitzes. Uh, Smith was known mostly as a, a, a play-action passer and a scrambling passer. Now Penn State is faced with a third and 25. And way off target that time. Tried to hit uh, his tight end, Brad Scoville. But it's going to be fourth and 25. 18 seconds left. 
and North Carolina State hopeful of a bowl bid. And with bowl scouts looking on today, just 18 seconds away from recording just the third win in this rather long series with Penn State. Fourth down, Penn State down to its last gasp. starts this is for Rakowski and he has it for a first down at the North Carolina State 37 yard line that stops the clock with 11 seconds remaining what a catch they have by one Rakowski. more timeout left they got a shot at a field goal Penn State still has a timeout left first down at the North Carolina State 37 yard line the clock starts to run in the general direction of Warner. Now that stops the clock with seven seconds remaining. Uh, I can't see any purpose, uh, particularly or the effect of that particular. You don't get any yardage and you, you stop the clock, but yet you almost, it's very difficult to take the chance of not getting the opportunity of getting that field goal off by trying to get one more play. And they finally get the ball deep upfield to Terry Rakowski. He's the best ball that Tate has thrown. Now he stays in his pocket. He steps up, he's got the arm. Almost got a good break for Penn State. All right, second and 10. Oh, he overshoots a wide open Terry Rakowski. One second left, this is gonna be up to Menhart. Oh my goodness. Well, Rakowski. he had him open on a 19 yard line, Ray. A, a Ra Rakowski's impressing me. He, you know, some guys get the job done. He went down, he throws the de defender deep, turned around, curled it up on the sidelines, just enough where they got in field goal range and the ball was overthrown. This will be a 54-yard attempt by Menhart out of a hold by Gooman. One second left. It is good. He did it. How about it? Mama, you had the beads out today. Whoa! What a finish to a wild football game. Look at look at the uh, North Carolina State players. That screen down pounding the turf. What a heartbreaker for North Carolina State. What an uplift for Penn State and the defensive game. Great, the only thing I was going to feel badly about, not the loss, but the great effort by those defensive kids not to go home with a victory. Of all the victories scored by Penn State, this has to be one of the most satisfying. And of all the losses ever suffered by North Carolina State, it has to be one of the most heartbreaking. This is one of those games, George, where they're, they're just... And there is number 11, Scott Smith, a hero, a total hero in defeat, the North Carolina State quarterback. And here again worth reliving for whether your loyalties are with either team or with no team. Is this a pressure kick or is this a pressure kick? Boom! 54. Let's see how much there was to spare, George. Not too much, Ray. <laughs> Not too much. Wow. Oh, boy. What a finish to a football game. And what a football game. And what a football game. If anybody out there in the audience thinks that these young players don't play for keeps, don't play for real, don't get affected emotionally, just look around the sidelines of the joy of the Penn State kids and the utter despair of North Carolina State. Here one, it is one more time. You take your shot at it this time, Ray. I've had my joy. Herb Menhart today has hit three field goals out of three attempts without even looking. I know it's the longest field goal he has ever kicked at Penn State. And I can't help but remember to two years ago when Penn State was behind and Chuck Fusina took the team almost 80 yards in the closing moments. And that day the winning score came when he hit Fitzky with a touchdown pass when he called 
It wasn't actually an audible. It was called in the middle of his cadence when this waved his hand. Fusina saw that the cornerback was cheating to the inside, and he called out in the middle of his cadence, Fitzky flag. And Fitzky ran a flag. Fusina hit him. He had no timeouts remaining. And Penn State came from behind that day. But I think today's victory might be even more memorable because of the all of the things that have happened over these last few weeks, the injuries to players, the necessity to move players from offense to defense, the volunteering of our player of the game today, Pete Kugler, who had just done so very, very well. Who had just done so very, very well. And he was the first... He, he had been playing well at offensive tackle, and he came into Joe this week, and you know the story, yes, George. You know, Ray, he was the first guy on the field to grab Menhart with Pete Kugler. And the decision has just been made, in addition to Pete Kugler receiving a Player of the Game Award, we will today have a dual player award. Pete Kugler and guess who else? Herb What's his name? Menhart. Herb Menhart you know, will I, join today <laughs> as the other player of the game I, I, by virtue of that fantastic kick. And, and not to demean the player of the game value, but those kids are so happy. They wouldn't care if you gave the player of the game to us up here or one of the cheerleaders. They're just overjoyed with that victory, and they have a right to be. And we should mention that Herb Menhart is a junior from Flowertown, Pennsylvania. Pete Kugler is a junior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And it's just reminding you they'll both be back next year. So we've reached the end of the game and the final score in a heart stopper. Penn State 9, North Carolina State 7. We'll be back right after this. Remember when Matt Suey ran this punt in for a touchdown, giving Penn State its first number one ranking in history? The spirit of Penn State's number one season, including their trip to the Sugar Bowl, has been captured masterfully in this three-color silkscreen print. Truly a collector's item suitable for framing. Chuck Vecina rides triumphantly through a field of Penn State blue atop the bronze Nittany Lion, eyes flashing crimson. This is a priceless treasure for any true Penn State fan, but only 1,000 have been printed. This is a limited edition. You must act now. The print is valued at $15 and is being offered exclusively to Penn State fans on the TCS Satellite Network. To get your poster, send a check or money order for $17. That's $15 for the print and $2 for shipping and handling to Penn State Posters, 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068. That's 890 Constitution Boulevard, New Kensington, Pennsylvania, 15068.